Somebody call in the VAR. We need a VAR. Oscopy. We need a VAR. Oscopy. A Veroscopy. <clears throat> Break it down. Break it down. Goldzilla, thank you for the, uh, what was that, two months? I can count. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy your ad-free experience. Enjoy. Thank you for the year. Chow Yang, thank you for the five months. Rebby Zhu, thank you for the 29 months. Do you guys have a good weekend? Josh, hashtag, thank you guys for the primes. Hooray to you. Thank you so much for the eight months. Did you have, do you have a good weekend? Do you have a good weekend? Yes or no? Superb weekend. My team won. Oh, that's what I was actually, uh, that's what I always hope for. I go into every weekend hoping that every one of you guys' teams wins. It never happens, but maybe someday. Maybe someday. Armadura, thank you for the eight months, dude. I don't know if the math works on that. I got a 15% raise, so Monday is looking good. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. A 20%, 15% raise? It's even better than 14.9. My team destroyed Aston Villa. All right, Tottenham, I see you. I see you. Newcastle play tonight. True. But they play at four my time instead of three. Because uh, we leapt forward this past weekend. Boy, I tell you, it caught me by surprise. I forgot that we leapt forward this past weekend. I looked at the clock and I was like, surely not. Stoppage time. Thank you for the 25 months. I appreciate you. Thank you. That's more than two years. My friend told me they heard I had a terrible owl impression and I responded when dude, I hate that so much. I'm going to give you one of those that hurt. Max new plays. Thank you for the 48 months. Where is the declaration of independence signed at the bottom? It's true. We have, have we entered our anti joke era as a group of people. Have we crossed the bridge into our anti-joke era? Madsen, thank you for the nine months. What did the little cannibal boy get when he came home late for dinner? What are we playing? Can't she? A cold shoulder. <laughs> you know what I did yesterday? I was really excited by this. Yesterday, I um, I, I woke up at 2 p.m. Um... And obviously, the only reason I would have been doing that is because I slept for 17 hours and no other reason. Um, so I woke up at 2 p.m. And I was like, what would Ron Swanson do in this situation? And then I remembered Ron Swanson's hangover cure. I don't know why I remembered this. The guy from uh, Parks and Recreation. And so I walked to the grocery store. I bought a flank steak. I pan fried it I, or pan seared it with a bit of butter and salt. And I ate it. And I'm going to be honest. That's all I did yesterday. Besides the Zealandisms. And uh, it works. It works. That's like Ron Swanson's hangover cure. I was like, wow, I felt great. I felt fantastic. It was a delightful day. It was the first you sat Sunday was the first day off that I'd had in a couple of weeks because we were getting the Zealandism channel off the ground. We were recording some great stuff for you guys uh, for the main channel as well. Some videos I'm really excited about. Obviously, the Ukraine one came out over the weekend, which is one we've been working on for a long time. It didn't do that well, but it's one of those that no matter how well it did, we wanted to get that thing out into the world. I feel like it's an important story to tell. Loner, thank you for the 22 months. Appreciate you, my dude. Jim, thank you for the 11 months. One more month of here and uh, one more month and you hit the year long. Oh, oh, beautiful. The golden bacon, it beckons, Jimmy the Greek. It beckons. I'll be pan searing meat for two hours. Well, how else are you supposed to get it well done? 
No, I'm not one of those psychopaths, though, dude. I, I medium rare. Although I don't trust myself to cook a medium rare steak, so I definitely cook it on the well side. When's the next rate year wonder, kids? Ooh, I don't know, Jabbers. Maybe we, uh, we would line up and do one of those. Beeble, thank you for the 21 months. Which cheese is made backwards? Eat him. It's the word made backwards. It's not funny, okay? What are you doing? Threshingo, thank you for the two months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. I appreciate it. But no, it was it was a good weekend. Uh, yeah, Sunday was the first day off I'd had in a, in a long time. I mean, we still, like, recorded Zealandisms, and I, like, worked on thumbnail stuff. But day off in terms of, like, didn't record a main channel video, didn't stream just kind of sat there it was pretty sweet i was only awake for nine hours i woke up at 2 p.m and went to sleep at 11. <laughs> but boy those nine hours were freaking electric fred thank you for the nine months z's on time no nah, we leaped forward i was technically 45 minutes late why is your surname zealand is there history behind it well i mean it's not my surname hold on i forgot let me let me look um, I guess that doesn't work. So according to this, it's my first name. I'm not sure though. Let me check. It never works. Okay. So according to this, that's also my first name. So I was just checking. I uh, no, I wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. So no, it's my first name. My last name is Shannon. Um, same as the international airport in Dublin, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go, boys. Yeah, net worth still four million. <laughs> Why are we in the dugout? Uh, I don't know. I didn't mean to be in the dugout. I think I just hit the button on accident. I didn't mean to be in the dugout. I don't trust the source. Yeah, that's fair. Um, oh yeah, my last name is Shannon. Um, first name is Zealand. But it is my actual name. It's not like uh, you know, I'm I'm based. I'm like Rihanna. It's. <laughs> I'm like I'm like I am Rihanna. I am Beyonce, actually. Thank you for the three years, Micro Hagrid. Are you like Hagrid's normal size brother? Am I like Cher? You both have massive foreheads. Does Rihanna have a massive forehead? Does she, I feel like maybe she does. Am I an umbrella? I am an umbrella. No, look, I when I was in eighth grade and I played basketball. I think my pregame warm up, like shooting around in my, uh, sw you know, my, my pregame sweats, uh, it was a lot of Rihanna on that playlist. There was a lot of Rihanna on that playlist. Like I maybe grew out of that, or you know, that was more than ten years ago now. But there was a lot of Rihanna on that playlist. A lot. Zealand compares himself on this episode of Delusion. Zealand is Rihanna. I should be like that guy that I uh, spent, whatever, $30,000 on surgeries to try and look like David Beckham. I'm going to do that, but for Rihanna. That's what I'm going to do. Do I have affiliations with the Shannon hockey guy? No, but he did play for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I was my team, Ryan Shannon. And so I did, um, we, we got jerseys that said Shannon on the back, like unironically. So that's not problematic at all. Look, okay. If Michael Jackson can do it. All right. What are you trying to say right now? Now, oh, hold on. Javon, thank you for the 43 months. Oh yeah, dude. The Oscars were last night. John Cena was like, just straight up naked. He, I know he wasn't actually. He had like the, I'm sure he had something on under that, but. 
Ariana song, jo song joke uh, conflicted. All tragic. What do I think about 60-year-old Mike Tyson against Jake Paul? I think that Mike Tyson and Jake Paul both looked at the situation very logically and decided they could both make a ton of money if they did it. And so <laughs> I didn't see him. That's that's good. That's good. That's funny. But uh, no, I, I think they both looked at the situation. They went, dude, we can make a boatload of money. If we just box, uh, I think Jake Paul's going to win. I don't think that's uh, that should have anything to do with Mike Tyson's legacy. He's like 58 years old. Um, but, you know, I, I think Jake Paul's probably going to win. I think they both looked at it and decided they could make a ton of money. Uh, that was and then that was basically it. Cena's humiliation ritual. I actually love John Cena. I think he's almost he's like in on the joke. Right. I, I, I always thought John Cena was a. He passes the vibe check, right? We're talking about somebody that holds the world record for the most Make-A-Wish Foundation things. I uh, This is according to a random tweet I saw, but that dude does a lot of stuff for charity. Jake Paul wins is the biggest rig in history. No, 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 it's not. Okay, here's the deal, right? As much as I love to make fun of Jake Paul, and as much as if Jake Paul fought like an actual professional boxer, he would lose pretty convincingly, Compared to the average person, he's really good at boxing, all right? And another important thing to remember is that Jake and Logan Paul, as objectionable as they may be, right, those two dudes were state champion wrestlers in high school, right? They are combat sport athletes at a level that the vast majority of people never do in their life, right? And so it's not like you're, you know, you're giving me a month of training and sending me against 58-year-old Mike Tyson where I would lose and be, you know, eating through a straw for the next four months. Jake Paul is somebody that's done this for years, has a combat sports background, and he's not a bad boxer and is in tremendous shape against a 58-year-old dude. Like, I think, like, I think Jake Paul legitimately should be the favorite and will probably win, and I also don't think it's Mike Tyson's fault. He's 58! Is he 60? Is he actually 60 years old? No, he's 57. We're all wrong. Maybe somebody said he was 57. He's, he's, he's 57 years old. Yeah, but they're like, you know, you know there's, a, there, there's, there's levels to the game. And while Jake Paul is not like at the top of the game, right? Like we're not talking about somebody that's within the same stratosphere of an actual world champion boxer. We're talking about somebody that, like, I could train for a year and still get walloped by Jake Paul. Like, I, I would be. Yeah. Uh, is Mike, Mike Tyson's actually not tall. That was always the thing about Mike Tyson. Not actually tall. Even though he's a heavyweight, uh, he, I think he's, like, six feet. No, he's 5'10". Mike Tyson's 5'10". That's pretty crazy. Mike Tyson's literally 5'10". He's a stocky cannon of a man you know yeah i mean when like jake paul was born mike tyson was like 30 years old i think but yeah no i look the, the somebody the reason we're talking about this somebody asked my thoughts on like jake paul mike tyson i think they both looked at it and went dude we'll make a ton of money right we'll make a ton of money that's it. They're both they're both doing it uh like they're both doing it to make a ton of money and they will make a ton of money. Cuz as much as I'm going to try and resist the urge, it's like watching like, you know, it's like watching the show Cops or something where you're like you can't look away. You're like, "Ah, why is this so entertaining?" <laughs> and I'm sure it'll be all it'll be all over social media and then people are going to be asking me about it and I'm like, "Ah, fine. I'll watch it." Right? There's certain things like, you know, like uh, somebody having a meltdown at a restaurant. Like, you just can't look away. You're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> save me. No. <laughs> so, you know, somebody's yelling at the manager. You're just like, ah, yeah, I'm going to stay and watch. All right. <laughs> I'm going to stay and watch. But we didn't, I didn't actually, we didn't actually ask. I know I put it in the front of the title, leaving Jake Paul to one side.
Chat, was it a penalty? Was it a penalty? Yes or no? Jeremy Doku on Alexi McAllister, Liverpool against Manchester City. Yes or no? Is it a penalty? We can do a poll. We can do a poll. I wanted to. I wanted to do a little chat straw poll first. I think I know where most of it will lean. I mean, I did. I made a Zealandism about it. Came out this morning, but I will. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify it for you. All right, great Katana. Thank you for the two months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Yes, Javon, Joe, love you guys. Appreciate it. Fred, thank you for the nine months. Nine months, do I get child support? No, but you do get a Twitch child, so welcome to the, the harsh realities of the world. There's a poll up. Was it a penalty? Vote in the poll. This is official. We will be submitting it to the Referees Association. Was it a penalty? I voted in the poll. I just did that. Was it, was it? So here, here, here's the situation. I think both arguments are right. And yes, I am considering a career in politics. Thanks for asking. Now, I, I think that what the referees said, that he played the ball, that he did not know McAllister was there, I think all of that's true. If you watch from the angle behind McAllister, Doku's over here. Do Doku's like looking at, you know, he's, well, he's looking at the ball, but it looks like he's trying to watch a butterfly flying through a meadow. Like he, he's up here and he's just trying to play the ball with his boot, right? And he gets in the neighborhood of it. But in the modern game, I, there's a but in the sentence. There's a but. Give me a second. All right. When you are putting your boot that high up in the air, you are responsible. You're re you, you are like you are responsible for making sure you don't endanger somebody else and so the reason that it's a pen is because in the modern game even if you don't mean it even if you don't even see the player coming if your boot is that high and you make force of like forceful contact with somebody anyways and they're not like really hunting out that contact they're not just like really late trying to run into your shoe which McAllister was not he got to the ball first when you watch the replay, actually. He gets there just before uh, Doku. Then it's a pin. It will, one, it's a foul, which in this case means it's a pin, right? Because it, it's a dangerous play. Yeah, it's it, it it's a dangerous play. It's Doku is not trying to do it. He is not, he, he doesn't, he, I don't even think he knows McAllister is there until like right when they run into each other. If you watch where he's looking and he just thinks he's going to play the ball, but if you're lifting your boot up in the crowded space, and you're lifting your boot up in a crowded space, you are responsible for not hitting somebody with it. Yeah, like that's just the truth. Maybe 20 years ago, oh, tough, you know, yeah, tough, shit, right? Like you. But now, uh, uh, yeah, now that's a penalty. Yeah, there was a VAR check. Wasn't, uh, you know, uh, Klopp was fishing around for different reasons they would have used. Like, oh, it wasn't clear and obvious, or they'll sit down and assess the rules and find a reason. But Klopp, Klopp makes a very good point that it's a foul. You know, if that happens in the midfield circle, it's a foul. And if it's not, the crowd's all up in arms because it's a, it's a foul. It is. But I will also, my final point, though, is I am glad they didn't call it. Tam, thank you for the prime. Ozzy and Williams, thank you for the 30 months. Thank you both for supporting the stream. Tim, enjoy your new ad-free experience, courtesy of Jeff Bezos. I'm glad they didn't call it. Why? Because I'm not a Liverpool fan. I'm not a Liverpool hater. 
If I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be up at arms because that was a foul. Should have been a pen. But I am glad they didn't call it because now the Premier League race is literally as tight as possible with 10 matches to go, and it's going to be awesome. That's it. That's it. Like, objectively, the title race is more fun because that match was a draw. It is. <laughs> like, and, and I hate, I hate when a match is decided by that, even though it, it's a pen. It is a pen. Should have been called. If it's called, I, you, nobody can be upset about that. All right. But I hate when a match is decided on a penalty like that, especially one where Doku doesn't really know what's going on. You know, he's this isn't like some sort of malicious foul that's keeping a goal from happening, right? But... I hate when that happens, and I, I love I love what we have now is a three horse race for the title. That's going to be awesome. You hate Liverpool. I'm going to keep it real with you. The, the fans of the majority of the Big Six all think I hate their team specifically. Chris, thank you for the three months. <laughs> now, if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be furious. Totally, rightfully so. Totally, rightfully so. Doc of the Bay, thank you for the 14 months. I appreciate it. I smashed my face. And I, what is this? I smashed my face on a glockenspiel at work today. No setup for a joke. It actually happened. Really hurt. Got a nice cut on my forehead. The kids laughed. A glockenspiel? I mean, like, I... Oh, it's like a xylophone. The glockenspiel resembles a small xylophone, but is made of steel bars. Yeah, it would hurt. But nothing goes as hard as the sentence, I smashed my face on a glockenspiel. Because I was so sure that was the start of a dad joke, I couldn't... Madsen! Thank you for the 10 gifted subs, dude! Yes! Thank you for giving 10 people the emotes, the bacon, no ads for a month. Welcome to the Elite Online Gaming. <gasps> Madsen, thank you for supporting the channel with kindness. If you got a gifted sub, be sure to say thank you. Yeah, it's a musical instrument, the glockenspiel. As everybody knows, Doc of the Bay, I do hope you're okay. I don't mean to laugh at your pain, but you did seem in, you, you seemed interested in laughing at your pain. Z supports the 115. Is in the 115 charges? Dude, they're gonna get they're gonna get launched into the sun, but everybody's losing their mind that they haven't uh, they haven't like actually finished the investigation yet. I'm like, dude, it takes a while to investigate that amount of nonsense. It takes a while to investigate. Like the more nonsense that occurs, the harder it is to investigate. Why do I hate Sao Paulo? Joke's on you. I've never talked about Sao Paulo. Captain Chaps, thank you for the three months. Making sure Jeff Bezos cannot afford a glockenspiel. Yeah, he's dangerous with those. I've heard those are dangerous. Be careful around your own glockenspiels. What team does Zealand actually support? I'm team, like, let's just all have a good time, you know? You just did? I just did what? Do I think Maccabi Haifa can win against Florentina? Yeah, that was drawn the first leg. Yeah, they got a shot. They had a good showing in that first leg. I, I think that was the one that was drawn in the first leg. You should become a diplomat? No. Sounds really boring. Uh, I just want football to be the winner. Yeah, no, I, look, I, and I don't have, like, a secret club. I don't have a club. Uh, they lost 4-3. Oh, uh, there were two, there's two Israeli clubs in the, um, in like European competitions. They both actually had pretty good results. Hola from Argentina for a stream, uh, always watching YouTube. I appreciate that, dude. Welcome to the stream. How you doing? We need common sense glockenspiel really. Uh, <laughs> 
Where's our common sense glockenspiel legislation? This guy's in the chat. He's been harmed physically by a glockenspiel. What the hell? Kyle Skadu, thank you so much for the prime. I am sitting in 97% humidity and Z is in Jersey. I, I'm actually in a hoodie, um, but it is colder in, in New York. Kyle Skadu, thank you so much for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money to support the stream. I appreciate it. Thoughts on Conor McGregor? Dude's, uh, I don't know, UFC legend. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, worth like $500 million doing whatever the hell he wants now. I don't know. He's, uh, he's a weird dude, but I don't think he's any weirder than anybody else that's a $500 million athlete, right? Like, he's just a whatever. They exist. Prediction for Dortmund versus PSV. I got to look up what happened to that. Oh, that well, that's uh, tomorrow. Wait. That hasn't kicked off yet. That's Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Okay. Tomorrow is um, Arsenal, Porto, Barcelona, Napoli. So we're in for another couple of boring ties, most likely. Inter Atletico Madrid's going to be good. Uh, look. Dortmund's probably going to win, but PSV is in some just sensational form. That could just be like American propaganda because we have a couple of American players in this team, but PSV is in sensational form. Okay, it's 1-1. How did I just black out and not remember the fact that the first tie of this match was played? Where was I? Pluto? What was going on? What was I doing instead? How do I not remember this? Daniel Mellon and D I don't remember this at all. No, I mean, Dortmund's coming home with a draw. They got to win. In front of the yellow wall, what are you like? Yeah, they have to win. PSV's been in good form this year, but are they still top or is fine or... No, okay. They are they're running away with it a little bit. They're actually unbeaten. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not kidding. They're at PSV's in with a chance, but Dortmund has to be the favorite. Dortmund has to be the favorite. Level coming home. Gotta be the favorite. Do 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 is Flash Score my preferred app for results? I I don't really. It's the one that I figured out how to use, and I've never switched. I don't really care. <laughs> like people insist that other ones are better, but yeah, I think it's the most boring UCL ever. I yeah yeah, a pretty boring UCL. Thank goodness they created the conference league, so we've got something to like enjoy watching. But let's but let's be real. UCL, like we always root for the underdog. Like we need to be honest with ourselves for a second. We always root for the underdog, right? We always root for the underdog. Who doesn't love a good underdog story? But the problem is when you end up with so many of them, then the games just aren't as interesting anymore. They aren't. Yeah, like if, if you root, you root for the upsets, and that's always great. But then all of a sudden, you get Man City against Copenhagen in the knockouts, and you're like, "That." Right. <laughs> Lyndon Rainey, thank you for the forty months. <laughs> Holy Moses, Lyndon Rainey. At least Copenhagen was able to score. No, look, here's here's my point. If, if people people have been saying this from the moment the knockouts dropped in the Champions League, Champions League's not exciting this year. That's because there aren't as many protagonists and antagonists. What makes a good story, what makes people want to watch sports, is sports is the best reality television. It is. You watch sports for the stories. You also have your own team that you root for, but particularly in a situation like the Champions League with 
vast majority of people watching any given Champions League match are not a huge fan of one of those teams. I uh, then it, it's you're you're watching it for the story. There aren't as many strong characters right now. We're transitioning between eras for so long. We had Cristiano Ronaldo, we had Neymar, we had Messi, we had Barcelona's unbelievable midfield. Right, we had is PSG gonna do it? Even last year, we had is Manchester City finally gonna get over the hump. We had the Kevin De Bruyne, Pep, Erling Holland. Like, what's gonna now that they've won, and PSG's disintegrated, and it's just Mbappe there, right? In in Barcelona's in turnover, right? Like we're we're with we're without so many of the storylines that we followed for so many years that made the Champions League great. And so those new storylines will develop, but you've got a combination this year of a lot of teams making the knockouts that are a surprise, right? Where like Manchester United gets knocked out, Copenhagen goes in. Now look, Copenhagen deserved to go in, but that makes it less interesting for the neutral unless Copenhagen's going to go on and win the whole thing, which they obviously, they're not, right? So, but yeah, the Champions League is more boring because there's just less stories for us to be invested in. Who is going through between Barca and Napoli and Lamine Mall is better than Donovan. Hey, Landon's got more career accomplishments to this point, which isn't saying anything because Lamine Mall was born like five years ago, but I just watch for good football. I mean, if that's what you're watching for, then the Champions League is is still the best, right? Because you, it, the best club teams in Europe, at least a lot of them, can be found in in the Champions League. Chauvin, thank you for the year. Happy Monday, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the stream, brother. That yeah, Copenhagen group was exciting. Yeah, I agree. I think the Champions League group stage had a lot of fun. And that Copenhagen group was particularly interesting. It was a good time. Only reality TV I need is Triple D. What is that? Now, like, uh, that's my, those are my two cents on why the Champions League is less exciting. Because I agree with Gary Neville. I forgot the score of a Champions League tie just now. I thought Dortmund and PSV hadn't played yet. Diners, drive-ins, and dives. Oh, nice. That was the original TikTok food channel. The reason diners, drive-ins, and dives always did well and continues to do well is because they're one of the first people that figured out the Mr. Beast uh, style of content presentation they don't even ex they barely explain what's going on in that show it's just it's it's just you know 100 percent flavor town <laughs> guy fieri's in a kitchen some dude's making something good like The UCL will be more entertaining for me when my team gets in, which is Everton, so never. They don't count it out. Aston Villa's in Champions League spots this year. You can build a club up to that point. Who goes through between Napoli and Barca? I think Barca. They should be significant favorites, but, you know, one match, anything can happen. I think the only Italian team that... Will prob like will be in the quarterfinal is is uh, Inter. Guy Fieri still does TV. Yes, absolutely he does. Yeah, diners, drive-ins, and dives is. Like, have you ever watched the show and you focus on how it's constructed? <laughs> it is actually just like. It's like a YouTube video or something like the way that he, you know, a lot of shows like that would go and like set up the location a lot more. Guy Fury is just like, we're in Omaha. This guy makes something deep fried in butter. Hey, Bob, you want to make it? And Bob's like, hell yeah, I want to make it. And then he just fries it and then they eat it. And then they're in the next place. And you're like, what the hell just happened? It doesn't even matter. 
It's just good vibes. It's literally just good vibes. It, there's no setup. There's no like, hey, if you, you know, nothing. Just co quality with a capital Q content. <laughs> And Bob's just frying whatever he wants to fry in that batter. Thing it, it, that's America. Can I find the Cameroon thing? No. Okay. Let me see if it's here. I want to find an article about this Cameroon thing. Did it really? It's not on Reddit? Come on. So was, <laughs> Am I hallucinating? Where did it go? There it is. Thank you. National team wasn't the right keyword. Cameroon suspends 62 players for age fraud. 62! 60 freaking two! No, it's not, it's not just on the Daily Mail, all right? It's, it's all, uh, uh, all over. Okay, I just happened to open the Daily Mail one, okay? Bermuda's favorite newspaper. We'll go to Modern Ghana, which says it's 61, so how dare the Daily Mail. Cameroonian Football Federation has revealed a roster of 62 players, which notably includes the youngest participant of the Africa Cup of Nations team, who have been barred from competing in the domestic season playoffs due to allegations of age falsification. This also includes Wilfred Nathan Duala, who attracted attention as doubts rose over the fact that he was 17 years old, which is entirely fair. Uh dude, this is this is camera like other parts of the world have a minor issue with this. Like every once in a while, like a DR Congo had one guy who had to change. But specifically in Cameroon, this is like an absolute epidemic. These suspicions have been substantiated as Duala, the youngest contender at AFCON, finds himself among the 62 players uh, that were suspended from the Cameroonian uh, rest of the Cameroonian season due to irregularities in identification and age. That's true. This is not the first time they've done this either. This incident is unprecedented in Cameroon. Isn't unprecedented. I missed a key word there. Uh, because fake a foot, whatever the hell that is, announced the suspension of 21 out of the 30 players selected for the U-17 AFCON on grounds of age falsification. Bro! This was last year! And they're getting CSI on this, too. This action followed a round of MRI tests aimed at assessing bone development to cross-reference players' ages accurately. What the hell is going on in Cameroon? We're getting, like, NCIS Duala. Some edgy lady with, like, dark hair and tattoos sitting in a dark room looking at MRIs like, that's the 13th one this month. <laughs> He's 47 years old. <laughs> no. They're bringing out MRI tests to cross-reference player ages. 
I can't. In an official statement, they've attributed these measures to President Samuel Eto's directive expressing concern about the reputational damage caused by age fraud. Yeah, because everybody that comes out of Cameroon now, like Yusufa Mukoko, for example, everybody goes... Every single time. Every single time. No, 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 no. Look, do not project this to all of Africa. Like I said, this is this can be an issue in certain places. There was the one guy from DR Congo that was that that, 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 that got caught with it. But in Cameroon, this it, it, Mukoko was born in in Cameroon. That's why the Yusufa Mukoko is German. He was born in Cameroon. That's where that issue came from. Mukoko, Yusufa Mukoko was born in Cameroon. That's what I was referencing. In Cameroon specifically, this is a massive issue. Sorry to sound naive, but why do they do it? Uh, no, you're fine. Uh, so the best, the the only situation like this where I've actually read, so there there's two. There's typically two reasons, and there's two two different instances that I'm familiar with where ages have been altered. Uh, the first instance is the people that uh, stay in 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 like Cameroon, for example. Like there's no immigration or anything involved, and what they'll do is they will adopt somebody else's birth certificate, right? So it'll become clear at some point that this person has a chance to be a good player. And they'll link up with an agent, they'll have a head coach or whatever. And that head coach will go, hey, uh, before you take this step into like us representing you, it'd be kind of sick if you were like 17 instead of 20. And they went, okay. And then what they do is they find a birth certificate for somebody else. And they like they they you basically just take up that birth certificate and you become 17 instead of 20. Particularly, that's what happened with the guy in DR Congo, uh, where he met an agent when he was pretty young, and the agent convinced him that it was a good idea. You know, these are you're talking about teenagers here. The agent convinced him that it was a good idea to adopt this other birth certificate, this different name. Uh, this this was Silas Wamangatuka, who plays in the Bundesliga and is now Silas Mvumpa. He changed his name back. Um, and so he adopted this other birth certificate and became Silas Wamangatuka. The other explanation and the other instance where it happens has to do with immigration, uh, where uh, whether it be parents or counselor or whatever, when you immigrate, uh, particularly from an, a lesser developed nation into a more developed nation with like a, a better infrastructure for keeping track of citizens, whatever. Um, when you immigrate, sometimes they'll literally just be like, how old is that kid? You know what I mean? And it can be a good idea because when you, you know, you, you, let's say you lived in a refugee camp for four years and then you move to a country with like, you know, a normal school system and everything, it can be a good idea to be like, you know, maybe my kid's eight, but I want him to be six so that he can go through kindergarten and like start school here, you know? So they're, they're, like that, the other instance that I've heard that, that, that this thing, that this sort of thing has happened has to do with immigration and like kind of almost with the equivalent of like holding your kid back in school to help with the assimilation into a new country um, or because the academic level is so different that you want to take care of that. Yeah, so the, those are the two instances that I know how it happens. I'm sure there's a bunch of what like this article seems to be blaming Samuel Eto for it in some way. He's the president of the Cameroon FA, 
So I maybe he's got some sort of prerogative where he's like encouraging people to lie about their age so Cameroon can look better at youth level. Like it is senior level lying about your age doesn't really matter. It matters for clubs when it comes to like projecting future performance, but you know, that's that, that's why I always thought the Yusufu Mukoko stuff was stupid. I'm like I get that part of the reason this is wild is cuz he's t he's 16, but if he was 19, he's still bagging goals for Dortmund. Like you know, he's still in the German national team. Oh, that was the opposite. Is he the one pushing for bone checks? Oh, let me reread this. In an official statement, Fekafoot attributed these measures to Samuel Eto's directive. So wait, hold on. The way I read this was that Fekafoot was trying to counteract Samuel Eto's directive. I think this is probably translated so it's not clear, but it'd be good to check. Let's see if Ghana Soccer Nets got something about Eto in here. No. GRM Daily. Oh, no, it's it, okay. Never mind. Thank you so much for that. Samuel Eto's determination to tackle the problem. So he's leading the charge. So it is a big issue culturally and structurally in Cameroonian football, and Samuel Eto's trying to root it out. So Eto's trying to age fraud remains persistent issue in African football, casting a shadow of the continent's international achievements. Yeah, particularly in Cameroon. Like, it is interesting, especially, I think my, what really, really opened up my eyes was when I, I, I like, I wonder if there's an interview, Silas and Vumpa. Like, is there a video of him talking about it? <laughs> Why is the first thing Danny Aaron's thoughts on Silas's name change? All right, let's see if let's see if old Danny passes the vibe All check right, here. Make a quick clip on the clip chart, but I wow, he looks so different than he does now. That's crazy. Some people think this this channel is still not mine. This is my channel. I promise. I thought I'd just make a quick. Is he? How old is Danny Aaron's? He looks like he's freaking fifteen in this. If you guys don't know who this is, he's like a FIFA YouTuber that's kind of blown up recently in England. Born in two thousand. Oh, now he's born in two thousand two. He's twenty one years old. My God. Yo, you did a whole series on him? No, look, I know Silas Mvumpa's story. That's what I've been quoting through most of this. I'm familiar with his story. And it really changes, that changed my, okay, I'm not going to watch this. I changed my perception of how this works. You know, because people think that, like, if somebody lied about their age, that it was like, I want to say premeditated, basically. You know what I mean? Like that, that if somebody's lied about their age, that it was really nefarious, like change, you know, change in birth certificate. So the way Silas Mvumpa talks about it, it's kind it's kind of just whatever you want. Like, you know, for like if you're born in the United States, you're probably born in a hospital, right? Somebody like it's kept track of kind of on the nose like when you were you know down to the minute when you were born but in a lot of these places that's just not the case right in a lot of these places you can grow up and not be a soccer player and have no idea really how old you are it's kind of a rough approximation it's like a vibe check you know z is reaching here no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm serious. When you talk to these people that end up in these situations, like, it, 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 it is, it is difficult for us to imagine, and I'm saying us as like people that grow up in countries where this stuff is like, you know, people that were born in hospitals, <laughs> right? Like people that were born in hospitals, right? Hot, like in first world countries with a strong bureaucratic system that is keeping track of this. But like you don't remember when you were born, and if you even if that stuff isn't officially tracked, you just kind of go with whatever your parents say, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. 
But there's no, it's not like, not like hard set, you know? Do I think Africa doesn't have hospitals? Uh, believe it or not, no. I, I, I don't believe that. But go talk to Silas and Voompa about all that stuff. But yeah, if you, like, actually treat the, like, if you treat people that end up in these, like, age debates as human beings and you're like, dude, what happened? And they explain it to you and you start hearing stuff like that where it's like, yeah, you know, like, Nobody really knows how old they are, like, officially. Everybody just kind of, like, has an idea of how old they are. And so when some agent shows up with a birth certificate and is like, hey, this is you, I'm going to make you a famous soccer player, you just kind of go, screw it, okay? <laughs> like, yeah. Everistus, thank you so much for the 23 months, man. I appreciate it. I think it's fair to say for nefarious reasons. Oh, somebody's being nefarious. But it's it's often not just the player being nefarious. Right? Like, all 62 of these Cameroonian kids, right? This, th I mean, this guy's a little ridiculous. But... All 62 of these Cameroonian kids, I'd say the majority probably, were taken advantage of by a manager, an agent, something like that. It's mostly, yeah, like, there's a lot of, it's the people that are trying to make money off of the player. The players typically just want to play. And if you're in a poorer part of a country that doesn't have a strong bureaucracy to keep track of things like age, and like I said, I mean, you're in that situation and some dude shows up with a with a birth certificate and goes, I'm going to make you famous, right? You say yes. Like, you you just say yes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and look, there are a ton of hospitals in Africa. I realized the way I was telling that story, like, there there is a, there, there, there is a temptation to, like, overdo it with those kinds of explanations. I think a lot of people that grow up in, 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 in most parts of the world have a pretty similar upbringing, but the level of bureaucracy around keeping track of things like age can be different depending on where you are. Does it make it right? Dude, I, to be honest, the age stuff, I don't care about it as much as most people. I, I feel like that probably comes through. I don't care about it as much as most people. I just don't. I, 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 I think that obviously when it comes to U-20 World Cups and U-17 World Cups, I wish we like had a, a better infrastructure for being able to confirm all of those things, and it's difficult because you want to have competitive integrity, but it's better than it used to be. I mean, in the 80s, Saudi Arabia won the U-20 World Cup or whatever, and the entire team had like full facial hair and was basically just the senior national team. So it has gotten better than it was. <laughs> you know, it, it has gotten better than it was. Base baseball also yes, baseball does have a similar epidemic because of uh, la it, the same sort of thing happens in Latin America. Absolutely the same sort of thing. Like Dominican Republic, poorer parts of the Dominican Republic, you get the same story as I just was talking about with Silas and Vumpa that happens in Cameroon all the time, where you get these agents that are like, we're gonna like pretend to be like pretend to be this person, we're gonna go do that, yeah. What happened to Kvaric, Skelly, and Matoma this season? They're still good players. But, I mean, it's hard to be consistently great. It just is. So we have Barcelona and Chelsea coming up next. We probably need to rotate a little bit. <laughs> if I had to guess, I would rotate a little bit with those two matches on deck, wouldn't you? How about Marcelo, Enrique, uh... Who'd I sign in the summer? I always signed a couple of dudes, you know. A guy here, a guy there, perhaps. Who's the striker? Simone Scotta. Uh, one of those signings. It's not he's we're we're not in love with him. Okay, he's not like an unbelievably good player, but he is good. Rejevich! What's up, Reggie? How you doing? I don't have any other strikers. Never mind. This just became so much less cool. Da, 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 da. What happened to the streamer showdown? 
Uh, so it was run by a guy named Dr. Benji, and he uh, it just stopped putting it together, really. Um, there, were, there was a whole team behind it, and one of the guys that was behind it got another – got another job because it was kind of his full-time job to be working on the streamer showdowns. And there have been rumors of its return at various points, but at this point I'd probably believe it when I see it. Um, but it was a really special, you know, time while it was going. That was a very, very fun thing to be a part of. Um, and I think for a lot of people during the kind of pandemic era, I would, as I would call it, um, that was, that was a really fun thing to watch. Some a lot of people enjoyed, and it's always it's always a fun it's fun to be a part of something like that that you know just a lot of people enjoy. Was gorgeous. Thank you for the eight months. Why don't I host it? Takes a ton of time, dude. Takes a ton of time. Have I ever thought about doing different multiplayer streams? Yes, yes, I have. Um, I've kicked around various ideas. Uh, obviously, nothing's ever kind of come out of that. We did do the uh, streams with Carl. Um, where, you know, we kind of taught him how to play football manager on stream and that sort of that, that was fun. Um, Zealand versus Lucha would be spicy. Now I think we proved at least the last time we all played that we were, that Lucha and I were the two best ones. I just wish that in the network game, like, I made the Champions League final, and he won the Prim, but I lost the Champions League final. It would have been awesome if we'd split the major honors, but he got the best of me that time. He got the best of me. You think I need a goalkeeper today? Dangerous sentence right there. That's a very dangerous sentence. No, but I'll tell you what I don't need. Another defensive midfielder. So we're playing Blackburn. They're the team that got promoted through the playoff. They're in the prem for the first time in like 20 years. We should be able to absolutely roll them to get the stream off to a hot start today. So let's do that. Schmiebert, thank you for the 10 months. When's the next Carl stream? I don't know. Uh, he he is He loves the game and wants to play more of it, but he's just so busy. Um, that it's hard to get like four hours to sit down and, and play. Uh, we'll probably do more stuff with Carl in the future. I don't know what we're going to be able to do with that save long term. Who would win in a boxing matchup of all streamers? I don't know. We're all pretty big. Um, like Lelujo, Dr. Benji, Work the Space are all at least 6'2". Tom FM is giant. Like, I don't know what about making football manager stuff just makes you a really large human being. Uh, but, like, Tom FM's huge. Even, like, Clates is a, an above-average heighted individual. General Jaw, thank you for the nine months. Chuck Yay, thank you for the prime. You would lose? Uh, I'm not saying – I never said I was going to win. I was just saying, if it, yeah, Viking Dan's a big guy, um, unsurprisingly. Yeah, every uh, – work the space is at least as tall as I am. How tall is Tom? He's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, nearly two meters. And he's built, too. Tom's like an athlete. That dude would have been a defensive end. Like, if he played American football, he would have been like a pass rusher. He, he's built. Oh, dude, thank you guys so much for supporting the stream. Phil, thank you for the 21 months. Oh, it's Hendrick! Brilliant from Hendrick, the star boy strikes again for Tottenham Hotspur. Man like Hendrick, a man like Hendrick. We're playing him on the wing. He's got that Aryan Robin flair, baby. He cuts that in. You know it's going in. You know he's shelfing that. What's up? Sanguini, thank you for the seven months. So Phil heard that one recently. Uh, so, unfortunately, I can't rate it, but I do love a uh, – dogs can't use MRIs, but cats can. I do love that. Oh, we deflected that. Oh, and it's Regevic. Oh, and it's Janice Regevic with his first career goal.
Oh, it's excellent pressure there from Simone Scott. Uh, and then he gets out of the way for Chenis Rejevic. The Bosnian has his first goal for Tottenham. The $50 million man. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Romo. Aneko Romo. Oh, it's booted. Well, a wonderful 2-0 start at Blackburn. It's exactly what the uh, doctor ordered here. Uh, why did Mr. Spock need a secretary? Because logic dictates. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that's a B plus. I like that. That was a good one, Zanguini. Thank you for the seven months. I really appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. Do they get promoted with that goalie? Pro uh, yeah, but they might get, uh, and they will also get uh, relegated with that goalie. Is the Regevich guy good? Uh, yeah, it's a little early in his development. Uh, he's actually a tremendous passer, 18 vision, 18 passing, uh, and a good athlete as well, great off the ball. So he's a real, like, he works the half spaces super well. Obviously, his movement on that goal was great. He doesn't have tremendous touch, and he's not a natural goal scorer. But, like, see the way he floats through the space there? We really like that. Constantelius, ah, you got to be scoring that, bud. Yanis. Yanis, my brother. Where's the goal? Okay. <sighs> oh, Phillips. He pat yeah, just that's what I should tell him, dude. If you're not a natural finisher, but you have tremendous passing, hey man, just pass it to the net. All you gotta do is pass the ball to the net. The net is wide open. Just pass the ball to the net. You got 18 passing, dude. 17 technique. Just pass the ball to the net. This is all you, man. How old's Endrick? We want the truth. No, I mean Brazil's I. Uh, <laughs> There was, there was always, I hate, I hate purveying rumors because I do think a lot of uh, the rumors, uh, you know, uh, like I do think outside of Cameroon, apparently. Oh, there's the goal. Yanis Constantelius with his first goal of the season. And Blackburn are well and truly overmatched in the Premier League against this rampant Tottenham side. Yep, that is uh, passing it into the net. That's, oh, well, that was a huge deflection I didn't see, but we'll take it. Jenny Zrejevic with a goal and an assist from center mid on attack. I think that might be where we look to play him from now on. And we'll get Indrik off at uh, halftime, so he's ready to go for Barcelona and Chelsea. Indrik. Indrik again. Oh, Garfield, thank you for the six months. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Love your comics. Enjoy your ad-free experience. Oh, Hendrik! Yay. But, yeah, to finish that sentence, I feel like a lot of, outside of Cameroon, a lot of the age speculation uh, is, is typically rooted in, like, either ignorance or some, like, you know, it's like kind of a subconscious kind of racism thing going on where, you know, people looking down on, like, the Southern Hemisphere or whatever. Uh, clearly, though, in Cameroon, it is a monster problem. But, like, Hendrik... There's never been anything about him not being how old he says he is. The only Brazil story I've ever heard is that maybe, like, R9 was actually a little older than uh, than he said he was. Or, like, then, you know, his camp had his age listed at. But I've never seen that proven. Um, but that's literally the only time I've ever heard a rumor uh, come out of Brazil that was like that. Regevich! He is passing it into the net. Look at him go. Jenny's Regiment. What a match from Regiment. Hi, Kuda Bombs. Thank you. I appreciate you spending $5 of Jeff Bezos money supporting the stream. I really appreciate it. Scott Candidge, thank you for the 34 months, dude. Yeah, and some people look older, too. I always looked older than I was. So I'm sure if I was, uh, you know, a famous footballer. And I popped up on it, you know, and I'm I'm on it. Oh, that was his hat trick too. So like I was I, when I was 12 years old, I was six two. Same height I am now. I've been the same height since I was 12. So I like if if I rolled up to like some sort of U13 team, 
when I was 12 years old, you would have been looking at me like, what the hell? <laughs> Ordinary Ollie, dude, thank you so much for the two months. I appreciate it. I peaked at 12. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I was very, very tall. I had unbelievable growth, like, spurts and, like, growing pains when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I was, I was very, very tall. No, so if I rocked up to a U13 tournament, you know the funny thing is that you get a lot of that in, like, basketball in the United States because that just collects all the tallest people. So I played basketball. At the age of 12 years old, I was 6'2". Let me, hold on. Feet to centimeter. So 6'2 is like what? 6.15. I was 187 centimeters or 188 centimeters or whatever. Um, feet and inches. So like 6, 2. Yeah, 187, 188 uh, when I was 12. And there was on my basketball team. The, I was I was not near the tallest person. And it's like all in the same age group. Oh, come on, Romo. Skoda! No! Simone Skoda! Oh. oh, I'm the same height now. That's what we're talking I'm the exact same height I was when I was 12. It's changed like maybe half an inch. But there was, uh, I remember, I, I don't know where the hell he is, a kid named Darius, who was on my basketball team when we were all 12, 13 years old. He was two meters tall. He was 6'6". Six, six. There was another kid that was 6'4". So, like, I'd six, you know, another kid that was 6'3". Two other kids that were about my height. And we were all 12 years old. What do they feed you? I don't know. I ate a lot, but that was because I was growing so much. So I don't know what came first there. It was the chicken or the egg, you know? I was told I ate a lot because I was growing so much. That was it. What position did I play in basketball? At that time, I was a power forward. By the time I stopped playing, I was a point guard. <laughs> because, uh, stop growing. <laughs> Dang it, man. Really? There goes my clean sheet. Yeah, I know. I forgot, Hendrick. And then I was like, oh, I'll let him play 10 minutes. But you're right. There's no logical reason for me to continue. To play him, we should just get him off the field. I'm gonna blame him for that goal. Dang it, Hendrick! Your lack of hustle's the reason they scored. Watch them. Do they? They pull off a comeback. I'm ending the stream. I'm just gonna be very transparent. This is the worst team in the league. Five 0 lead at halftime. Oh, it's like, hey, Chad, it's Usman Dembele, except he's he's taking uh, penalties now. Why do you have to score right after? <laughs> Fucking five two, dude. We're we're cooked. It's over. It's so jover. All right. Oh, yes. That is lovely from Yannis Constantelius and Josh Stoic. What a fun match this is.
What's the prim right now? The prim record for goals in a match has got to be like nine or ten. I think it's ten. So I mean, we're not you know we're not closing in on that so much yet. Yanni's Constantelius though. That dude gets the job done. It's nine. Maybe just. I know 9-0 happened, what, two years ago? Was that uh, Manchester United over Liverpool? <laughs> it's 11. Okay, well, we're trying. Constantelius should have four goals in this game. The fact that he doesn't is kind of amazing. Give me Rosales. He's got good bounce back. I want him to get Gonzalo Inacio. I think that's it, though. Everybody else can just keep playing. Hey, Rosales, go uh, stretch them legs out there, sailor. One of those was against Tottenham. Nice. It's the history of the Tottenham. Which one of those? Would Tottenham lost eight to one. Was that the was that the match? Do they have Oscar Bob? They do, but that's like pre-boost Oscar Bob. That's not new database. Tom, thank you for the twenty months, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Hell yeah! B, but you get one of you get one of those. I'm gonna go with a B. Tom sucks. Dang it, Mikey. Hey, there you go. There's your record. Well, I guess not the record, but 7-2 win at Blackburn. Michael Coyote bagging another one. Dude, my fullback actually scored. No way. How's Blackburn have Pimbele? I Look, I actually didn't know Pimbele was real. Uh, great. Dang. We defended that really poorly. Hey, go lucky Edwards. Congratulations on the two years, dude. Hey, what's up? Everybody say hey to go lucky Edwards. Hi. We need to have manners. If somebody says hi, we say hi back. I don't know. Hey. Hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> How dare you? No. Wagwan, my general. Valentine, I am feeling like Valentine Barco today. That's right. That's what I'm at. Wagwan, my generals. Come on, man. So Pimbele is a French international. Oh, ball knowledge gap for me there. Hello. Yeah, well, Blackburn is in the Prem, so. The uh, first season in the Prem since 2012. So, like, 19 years outside the Prem for Blackburn. Finally, the Roses have a thorn once again. Oh, that's off. Oh, he doesn't actually play in the national team. Okay. Plays for Sunderland. Got it. You were just saying he was a French player. 
Nice win, boyos. That's a good dub. Gets the ball rolling down the hill in the right direction for us to start the stream, which is, uh, you know, it, it is nice to start the stream against a team like Blackburn. We got a way, an away trip to the Camp New that's going to spice things up now. The Camp New. Frederick Yulesgard. Well, I did think my Yules were a little unguarded, so I would appreciate the help. Thank you. Oh, okay. Sviko? I do already have one Bosnian. Can never have too many. He played for France at the Olympics. Ah. Oh, they fixed the bug with the Legends thing? Dude, that's incredible. I'm glad that was a bug. Sorry about Crusader Kings. They have the they dropped the Legends DLC. And they were going away way too fast, but now they fixed it so it's 200 years. That's good. It says it should be. Did I sign Yvonne? No. Yvonne Alves remains at Hoffenheim. He is quite upset about it. But we were unable to finagle our way on deadline day to being able to pay for the Yvonne Alves transfer to bring him into our team. We were unable to. Gan Gan, thank you for the 30, the 13 months. Brother. <sighs> that was a pretty good one. You need to learn to knock the ball past opponents. The fact that you have failed to learn this is a great insult to me. Kodas, thank you for the two months, man. I, okay, I appreciate you guys supporting the stream. Enjoy your lack of ads, Kodas, courtesy of Jeff Bezos and his $5 you just dropped there. Hey, best to now. Thank you for the prime. Enjoy the lack of ads. I'll see you in the subsection of the Discord. So the best, so the best one of those like glitches that strategy games can have, where they enter the code like, "Oh, the legend lasts for twenty years instead of two hundred, and you're like, "Ah, oh, we literally just typed that in wrong." Uh, the best one of those that ever existed was in Civ, and if you play Civilizations, you probably know what I'm going to talk about. In uh in Civ, there was a glitch where there's like an aggressiveness rating. <laughs> this is the best. There there's an aggressiveness rating for like NPCs. So like if another civilization existed, say it was, you know, yeah, you guys you guys know what I'm talking about. Say it, whatever civilization, right? It's like friggin' Teddy Roosevelt for the U.S. or Queen Victoria, right? Queen Tamiris of uh, Scythia, right? They have an aggressiveness rating so that they play somewhat historically accurate. And that aggressiveness rating on Gandhi, right? Because Gandhi was one of two of, like, India had two leaders and Gandhi was one of them, uh, was zero. The problem with the way the game read the code was that instead of zero meaning zero, zero meant unlimited <laughs> unlimited aggressiveness which meant that every single game you played if gandhi was in the game he would start dropping nukes everywhere the myth is that it was an overflow to negative oh so you're telling me that myth or that story is a myth and that they just accidentally had him turned up too much on aggression. Because it's not a myth that he was crazy aggressive. Because I played the game. <laughs> There's a reason everybody was losing their mind because Gandhi was nuking everybody.
Yeah, so Gandhi was just dropping nukes all over the place. It was a wild time to be alive, for sure. Definitely, yeah, definitely a wild time to be alive. It was. It read minus one is 255, not zero is infinite. Okay, so it wasn't a myth. Oh, okay, so it was so low. Oh, I get what... So they put it... I guess they put it at zero. But if anything happened in the game to push his aggressiveness lower, then it would just, like, reset to the high... That makes a lot of sense. Jack, thank you for the five months, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Thank you for doing it with $5 of Jeff Bezos money, Jack, and I hope you're having a good one. Enjoy your lack of ads and your silver bacon next month. Hardy har har. Not re well, okay. You what I did with my hands was right. Like if it went any lower, it would then just go back to the top. It would like cycle back up. Not technically reset. That is correct. All right, 30 days to try and get an offer in. Please and thank you. We will continue to try and bait an offer for Pape Matasar. Who is one of the two players along with Jimenez that we are uh, we are wishing to unload to save us the burden of their financial situation? Although you know we wish them well in dealing with their financial situation, we are not going to be the people that are going to be paying for it. That's going to be somebody else, so they might as well figure it out now. We are cleaning out our short lists, so we're going to have a couple of reports that pop up like this one, where we look at the players and go, "All these guys are pretty bad." And then everybody else is like, yep, those guys are pretty bad. And we go, okay, there's Romero. He's still weird and fine. Uh, Kalechi, Iannaccio. Jeremy Jacquet. Igor Jorge, sure. Balam Junior. Look, the only thing that you can take as fact from this, apparently, is that Gandhi was just way too broken and aggressive. <laughs> In Civ. Whatever caused that, the world may never know. It'll be a mystery until the end of time. What actually caused Gandhi to be so aggressive in Civ 6? Civ 5, I think it was, actually. Gandhi was spirited, spirited with 20 aggression. Yes. Uh, so they apparently, according to that one person in the chat, what happened was Civ, uh, uh, Crusader Kings dropped their new DLC, but everybody didn't like the legends because they went away too fast. But they typed in 20 years instead of 200. Which I love that like through the what you would hope would be a lot of different playtesting, that sort of thing is just not discovered. No, Robert Soldrikis is finally not good enough to be on my short list. <laughs> Robert Snow! No, Roberts. Oh, you dice is so good. Can we have loaned him in this year? Maybe. Maybe we do that in January. He is still on the loan list. I might want to do that. Out of possession? Are we that afraid of them? Are you serious? I'm gonna work on transition. I'm not. I'm not going into this match super afraid of Barcelona. We're us. We've got game. What do you even mean? We are us. Kulisevsky's singing Constantelius's praises. Yeah, you're not the only one. He has been really, really good. Xavi just came out and said that he has George Shikichi under control. Yeah, we'll see about that. We will see about that. This is a big Champions League night. This is what you join a club like Tottenham to experience. A big Champions League night. Basel just beat Galatasaray, so that happened. Uh, nothing else surprising. Milan beat Juventus. PSG survives RB Leipzig. 
Goose Till wants to stay. Good for Goose. Uh, is there a player ability for strikers to train so they're not offside as often? Beats offside trap. You want that one. They need good off the ball and good athleticism. And then they could be very, very dangerous and beats offside trap. Thank you for supporting the stream, Fenton. Friggin' tier two for 29 months. Hot diggity dog. Tier two. Uh, chat, we're winning this game, though. Call my shots at the camp new. I like our team. I like what we got going on. I think we're winning this game. Jan Niklas Besta, Santiago Sosa. Dude's bad. Santiago Castro. Man, just a bad day for Santiago's everywhere, really. Jose Cifuentes. Also uh, a no in Christian Spendi. That's the guy I was thinking about signing when he were, we were at a very different type of club than we are now. We were looking at him when we were in the second division of France. It's good that we're updating, though. It's good that we are updating our short list. We're down to 468 people on our scouting list. At least we're keeping the scouts busy. Very important. They're very highly paid. We need to make sure that they're running to the ground. Santiago Jimenez. Right, he's not registered. Forgot about that. Okay, so starting lineup. Boom. Boom, Vandeven. Oh, dang it. Uh, Inacio, switch. So it's Vicario, Lewis, Rosales, Inacio, Vandeven, Guerra. Somebody find me, Eves Basuma. Thank you. Endrick, Bellarmino, Seca, George, Chakichi, and Simone Scotta. Do, 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 do. Mastantuano, Gamera, you, and then Marcelo Enrique. Okay, we do actually have a full bench as well. Can be rare for us. We're going to come out and play aggressive too. What? Hi, how's your day? It's going well, Relic. We're off to a winning start. You know, I'm feeling confident. Going against Xavi's Barca. He's apparently he's still there in September of 2030. Oh, yes, dude. I I love this. I love this for them. They're going with a wild formation. Um, Sidimambe Conte, 22-year-old who has started to break into the Spanish national team. They are still running La Mina Ball. 51 caps, 22 goals for Spain. 200 appearances, 109 goals for Barcelona. He is, in 2030, he is 23 years old. We are going to be dealing with Lamine Yamal for the next 20 years. Yeah, it's a wild formation, but we can top it. Dude, we can top it. We've got the, we've got the stuff. Former Real Madrid man, Indrik, is back to try and take it out on his former team. All right, we're going to need a good performance, Simone Scott. I'm going to want to see that build-up play, dude. I'm going to want to see that build-up play. Yeah, 20, 23, 21, 22. We have a very f young front four that are take care of business. A very, very solid sound back line, though. Oh, don't simulate the match. Oh, God. Oh. They don't really have Alejandro Balde moving much. <sighs> Are you ready? It's a Champions League night in the camp now. 
It's Tottenham Hotspur against Barcelona. Oh, look at that Champions League thing. Ah, it's so sick. Oh, now it's just any other match, though. Once that ref picks the ball up, you know, it's just any other match. You look around the stadium. Oh, look what we have. We've earned with our Europa League win last season. Oh, they're rocking Brahim Diaz. That's awkward. Real Madrid guy. The champions. All Seca. Oh. Well, he's off. He's not. We just got really lucky. We don't have a lot of the ball. This is pretty Barcelona esque, but. Oh, they just bought that Mansvert guy. He was crazy expensive. Oh, no. John. Thank you so much for the three years, John. Been a great part of the community, but that joke, that joke caused me a lot of pain. It did, however, help me forget about the fact that Gabby just cooked me, so. I appreciate that. Oh, I think he was off, but just in case he's not. Wait, that was Gavi's first goal of the season. That's actually kind of crazy. Good job of leaving him. We didn't follow him too much. We should be okay. Yeah. Haven't been the better team for the first 22 minutes, which has been an unwelcome surprise. Yeah, the fact that Lamina Mall is white in the engine, very interesting design choice there. They Michael Jackson him a little bit. That's literally Lamina Mall. It's like the exact same skin tone that Gavi has. Come on, boys. Come on now. Javi Guerra. Bad pass, but mine. Eves Basuma. Oh, that's corner. Dang it. First time we saw Chikichi get on the ball in this match. Got to get rid of it. Got to get. Oh, he found Bellarmino Seca. It's kind of hoping he'd do anything other than run straight forward and smack a shot off somebody, but I guess that's just what we were doing. That was our move today. Seca. Inacio. Nice. Hendricks had a terrible match, uh, apparently. He's a 6.3 right now. Could change all of that with one nice little play right here. Javi Guerra. Van oh, that is just terrible for Mickey. That is just terrible. Now we respond. Oh, it's there. It's Inacio! Thank you. Thank you very much. We have not been the better team in this first half, but second with a good ball. Gonzalo Inacio's there. Hell yeah, I go to balanced. Uh, no. I don't know why I, I, what am I, a sheeple? We're fine.
Right. Okay. Oh. All right, Hendrick's been bad, but he is such a good player. We're going to give him a bit of a chance to bounce back from that to start the second half. Obviously, tactically, we've been kind of losing the battle here. Um, we have not been able to press them effectively at all. So I think it might be, it might be who of us to uh, make an adjustment, perhaps. Uh, I think maybe we turn this into like a four-three-three, but a less aggressive four-three-three. Okay, there we go. That's got good balance. Okay, that gives us a chance. Tactical adjustment starting the second half. All right, everybody pay attention. Is Hendrick inconsistent in the game? I don't think he's got an inconsistent. I don't think his consistency attribute is, is low. I think that players are natural. Like, you get good ratings, you get bad ratings, especially we were playing him at center forward, and it's not his best position. He's been great as an inside forward this year. But if we get to 60 minutes and he's still dropping this generational stinker, then it, uh, it might be time. Off, 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 off. Thank you. So far, he was right about keeping Chigichi silent. Yeah, no, dead, dead. he was dead serious. I thought Xavi was joking. But we have not seen... I mean, we've seen Indrik with the ball more than Chigichi, but they, uh, my wingers are doing absolutely nothing it was a really bad game honestly for uh for some bad performances out of the wings because all right i'm gonna go Ginny's regovich as the center mid on attack because i really loved the way he moved through a lot of those spaces uh constantelius is gonna come in i like him on that side i'm gonna get indrick out for mikey moore actually oh, no ne neka romo can't really do that Mass and Tuano, I don't trust to put on the field in this situation. So I'm just going to bring Mikey Moore out. We'll just kind of get a nice triangle going with Rico Lewis and Mikey Moore and Bellarmino Seca. Radjevic coming in. Um, we don't have a like for like substitution for Simone Scotta. So he just kind of has to keep doing yeoman's work up top. Now, our, our new tactic is, is, is limited their chances in the second half. They haven't had nearly as many chances as they had in the first half. Uh, but we've also shown the the complete lack of creativity going on right now. And that's a bit of an issue. So Constantelius is going to move. I'm going to drop uh, Constantelius and we'll go with a Neko Romo who is going to, uh, he's, he's going to, he's just going to vibe. You know, he's going to be uh, an inverted winger. Nah, he's going to be a winger. All right, guys, we, uh, we can figure this out. Just need one of the guys we're bringing in to be able to make a play. Thinking maybe Coyote for Lewis. Don't have a lot of other subs that would be great. This is a sick time for a highlight, though, after nothing's happened in the second half. Middle, middle, get the ball into Basuma. Get it to Eves. Not now, but any other time would have been nice. Constantelius working hard to get open. We love to see it. Oh, Mikey Moore. Well, not then, earlier. Oh, it's there! Oh! Should have gone right up the middle to Regovic. That's where it was. I do have one more sub. Anybody we want to bring in that could just give us maybe some pace or, like, break the game open really late? Franco! Give me Mastin Tuano. I don't think he's going to do anything in these last five minutes, but he's a good athlete with great ball control. And in the spot we were just in, a guy with good ball control could have gotten himself in on goal. 
Ah, 1-1. One, one. Unless we've got something awesome. Nah, 1-1 one, one at Camp New. Nick, thank you for the 20 months, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised Mass and Tuano didn't get injured, honestly. I'll play the underdog card. Say, uh, you know, 1-1 one, one at the Camp New. There have been way worse results than that. That's arguably the toughest match we have in our entire Champions League run. And we got a good result in it. So, absolute nothing burger of a second half. But I like the adjustment. We gave them a little too much of a glimpse of the goal there. Pape Matosar, Hector Gamara, Franco Mastantuano. Please tell me you can play this one match without getting hurt. Franco, I'm watching you. You've been hurt like the entire time I've been the coach of this team. Tell me you can do this. Please. I want to find out if you actually can be a decent player in this team or not, Franco. I want to figure that out. Harperoni, though, thank you for the four months. Good evening, Z. Currently setting up my scouting in a new save and was wondering if there's a way to make the recruitment focuses run forever. There is. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the stream, by the way. But if you go here, uh, there is an ongoing option in a priority. So you can just make it last forever, should you want. I don't do that because I like getting reminders in my inbox about how it's going. Forces me to think about scouting more. Uh, oh, Vicario got dropped by England. Mikey Moore got left out. Oh, no. Smoney Scott is in the Italian team. Was he before? Yeah, he was. He was. Hector Gamera and Franco Mastantuano. Ingley and McAvoy got called up by England. I mean, they must just be out of left backs at this point. Karsten Ebert? Dude, what are they? They're, there's no way they're playing an actual... Nations League. Karsten Ebert's making the German team makes absolute. It makes that makes no sense. Gamera, what are you? Uh, oh, come on. He wants to up his playing time. Okay. Uh, what playing time does he want? If we can't talk him out of this. Uh. I'll accept. Please don't be too crazy. What did it go up to? Oh, squad player? I feel like I can survive that. Okay. His playing time went up to squad player, guys. It wasn't that bad. I don't know what you were worried about. Only squad player. International manager ever... I Look, I don't know. International management has been broken as long as I've played FM. So I, I'm just going to assume that it's always been broken. I don't know if there was a point back in the mists of time where it was actually fine and functional, but hasn't been for a long time. All right, at home against Chelsea, they're apparently 14th right now. They're having a very Chelsea-esque season. Get three days off, plenty of time to recover from our road trip to Spain. Got to say, I'm expecting three points here. I think also if we want to be a team that can push for at least being a part of the league title race. I'm not necessarily expecting us to win it this year, talent-wise, but being able to push them for it. This is probably a match where picking up three points would look real good on us. Hi, man. Thank you for the 10 months. Thank you for supporting the stream. Yeah. I appreciate you. On the goat, I got Tottenham a trophy. I did. I did get Tottenham a trophy. Yeah, no, no, no. If Saturday don't come through. Come on, Pape Matosar. We are going to find you a home. I'm going to make those, like, commercials they make from, like, the dog pound, you know? What's that song that they play? What's that song that they play in those commercials? When they're, like, trying to get you to adopt, like, a lost puppy? What song do they play? What's the name of that song? Oh, yeah. You're right. That's it. Okay. Is this it? Hello.
while you're sitting there in your comfy house, eating your nice three square meals a day full of air conditioning, something horrible is going on in the world, and I'm here to make you feel bad about it. You see, there's a player. He could be yours. A lost player without a home. You could be that home. Without you, these sad eyes will fade from history. But with your help and three easy payments of 1999, Pape Matarsar could finally find a home, a forever home, to live out the rest of his days in happiness the way he deserves. So if you have literally an ounce of moral being left in your soul at all, call the number on your screen now. And you can have Pape Matarsar. And so many other players at this godforsaken club that nobody seems to want. They can all be taken care of. And this guilt trip of a commercial that makes you feel terrible for eating that nice food in front of you. Don't worry, it'll still be here whether you donate or not. You'll be watching it again next week. If it catches you at the wrong time, you might actually feel something for the first time since you watched the final episode of The Office. Three easy payments of 1999, and they could find a home. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh. Look, we're doing all we can on the transfer market chat, all right? We are doing all we can. We're doing all we can, all right? I'm, do I I'm literally willing to do whatever I need to do to sell these guys. So let me know. Call the number on your <laughs> call the number on your screen. Who's this guy? Uh he's not good. I said I hate the office. I've tried over and over. Uh I've tried over and over to get into it, but I just don't like it. Look, I mean, people like and dislike different things. What I will say about the office is there are certain things, like I remember I was like that about Game of Thrones for a long time. Uh, there are certain things that so many people like it that it's worth giving it a longer chance. But if you did give it a longer chance and you still didn't like it, who cares? People are allowed to like and not like different things. But now the the uh, the early seasons of The Office are not great. It's like one of the it has to like sneak up on you, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I get it. But then the counter argument is that media shouldn't be like that. It should grab you from the beginning. And it's like, okay, well, that's probably true. Yeah, that's fair. Does this count as payment? James, thank you for the 100 bits. 1-800-ADOPT-A-SPUR, dude. 1-800-ADOPT-A-SPUR. That is the number. Oh. 1-800-ADOPT-A-SPUR. Forced humor. Cringe. I really, I, you're, if you're talking about like the office, uh, I guess maybe, but like every comedic, like every comedy show ever is technically forced humor. So if you've ever found some sort of performance funny, then you too have fallen victim to forced humor. Don, thank you for the five months. I got terrible news, dude. This stream's also probably in the forced humor category. If we're being entirely honest with ourselves, this stream is in the forced humor category. I do not get on stream like, all right, boys, let's be as unentertaining as possible today. 
Showtime. Although I do look in the mirror and say showtime before every stream. True story. Wow, they're exhausted. This boy's had a war midweek. Well, they no, they just played on Thursday. I got an extra day of rest. <laughs> Sucks to suck. Wouldn't know what that's like. Just kidding. We won that last year. Good luck. Okay. Z may be cringe, but I am free. Amen, brother. I am free. I might be cringe. I am, dare I say I am cringe, but I am free. I sail freely. It's like the the pirate. Like uh, you're the worst pirate I've ever heard of, but you have heard of me. Might be the most cringe view humor you've ever heard, but it's not forced. It's all natural. <laughs> I am free, but at what cost? Alas, I am not free of cringe. True. Very well said. I think we need to show everyone that their recent praise is justified. Yes, let's do that. Sounds like a great idea. Let's justify some praise. Am I going to the World Cup final in Jersey? Dude, it's like two and a half years from now. I don't know what I'm doing next week. But I am really excited for whatever content I end up getting involved in around the World Cup. I am incredibly excited for it. Whatever that happens to be, just generally excited for the future and, and what, uh, what's going to happen around that. Yeah, only if I get more subscriptions, then I'll, I, then, then I'll go. I look. That's a big stadium. There's a lot of seats in that stadium. Sure wouldn't be that crazy. Now, my dream for the World Cup in 2026, right now, we'll see, it could change, is I want to rent out a bar in New York. Not rent out, but, like, partner with a bar in New York and host a daily live-streamed show like, a, you know, from a, like, soccer bar in New York. Almost like kind of a college game day thing, but every day, watch alongs to every single match, sitting there talking about the matches in between, rotating cast of characters. That is my uh, vision for what we could do for the 2026 World Cup. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, we, we have a bar correspondent, somebody that's, like, sitting at the bar top that we can cut to. <laughs> Like, how, how does it feel amongst the people? And there's, like, some dude, like, sounds, I mean, it was already, look, I did a live watch along to every single match at the last World Cup. I am down to exhaust myself around the World Cup because it's so fun. Let's go. That's a beautiful goal also. But my idea for what would be a really fun thing that we could do around the World Cup is that. That plan could change. I might be presented with, I, you know, a different, an opportunity here, an opportunity there. You know, I don't know. But it, it would be really fun to do a daily live stream from the bar. You know, like we basically just have like a desk set up at the back of the bar. Am I, you know, ba running almost like a full TV production out of the bar is like the World Cup show. It would be really, really fun. So I, I, you know me, I always, I think big, I dream big. That's where we're able to get videos like the Faroe Islands video and, and that sort of stuff done and come and where they come from. Um, we, you know, quite simply do not. Oh, we just got a red. Hundred two million for what?
All right, I'm going to try to make this work. They are tired, so I don't necessarily want to give them, like, too much of the ball, but I am going to try and make this work. Okay, that, that's what we're going to do. Want to be able to put them under some pressure. So Garrett to the left. Sek is going to sit in the middle. Basuma will sit behind him. We get, like, a four, maybe five-man push if you get a fullback up there. Um, got that one goal advantage courtesy of Indrick, so I don't want to bring him off just to completely adjust our tactic, but. Good line, lads, good line. So no Chigichi for the next three Premier League matches, which is, that sucks. Straight red for a star winger. Who does that? Nice tackle by Simone Skoda. Not the guy I had on my bingo card to be pulling that out. Oh, I mean, what? He's already running away from the ball. Like, what? No, he's already getting a fine. We've got it on our books that he's going to get a fine for that, so. We're going to get him fined. Now, you don't you worry. Don't you worry, child. We're going to get him fined. What are you, what are you doing? What are you, what are you waiting for here? Come on. Nice save, Vicario. Okay, good. I'm going to bring out some encouragement. Say, all right, go get him in the second half there, Tiger. Well, that's a hell of a game, dude. Hell of a game. Uh, Indrik just got hurt. So Chigichi got a straight red. Indrik just got hurt. Um. Yeah. Okay. That sucks, man. That really sucks. Okay. Where's Constantelius? He's going to get Seca. And we're going to play this way. There's no reason for uh, Rosales to be keeping him on side here. He's just borked our whole line. This would be a welcome surprise. What the hell just happened? Right after they equalized, no way. He's passing it to nobody. 
He's just hitting the ball into an area and there's nobody there and Fafana tries to play it and puts it in his own net. Oh my, okay, we're back in the lead, dude. Keep the faith, we're back in the lead. This is a gut check result right here. That's what we're getting. Get that ball out of here. Get that ball out of here. Vicario's there. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Life's good. Easy, breezy, beautiful. It's like a cover girl advertisement out here, man. We are so okay. Oh, going along. Oh, my goodness. That's our ball. Well played by Basuma. Vandevin. Okay. Basuma. Mickey. Uh, yeah, Eves getting it turned around. Oh, my goodness. Javi Guerra. Simone Skoda with a lovely ball to Mikey Moore. Back towards Skoda. That was so well worked. Ref, thank you. And buckets. Oh. This is nice, though. That was nice, ain't it? That was nice. Making some plays out there today. Give me that ball. That's okay. Fair play, dude. Totally fair. Lewis. Oh, come on. Yeah, so that foul on the edge of the box, that wasn't a red. Come on. Ref's taking bribes. We all know it. So true. Saw it with my own eyes. You can't lie to me anymore. I saw it with my own eyes. Oh, great play by Captain Rico Lewis. Javi Guerra, it's Simone Skoda in behind, and it's 3-1. What is happening? Simone Skoda, the 20-year-old Italian, with his big moment. 10-man OP. Oh, hell yeah. We were just getting started when we went down to 10. Just getting started. Oh, look at Javi Guerra. Look at that freaking defense from Javi Guerra. Bellanova thing. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. Oh, give me four. Give me a 4-1. Simone Scota, immense performance from the young forward. Oh, Simone Scota. Still Simone Scota. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, Rosales. He is a goal man on set pieces. Inacio. Rosales. Alrighty. I got some substitutions that I'm going to get ready to make here in a hot second. Long we can keep this ball out of the net. You hear me? Gosh darn tootin' day. There is no way. Absolutely not. Oh, he's flopping like a fish. Magic harp. 17 yards away from the goal. Absurd. Uh, Mikey got that. Sh sir, 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 sir. I uh, got Marcel Enrique and Freeves Basuma. Rico deserved his yellow, allegedly. Well, a good thing we have Michael Coyote. Uh, we also have Josh Doig. So I've got fullbacks I really trust, and we need energy in our defense. Subs! Hey, pay attention. We're gonna uh, we're gonna try and waste as much time before this pen as possible. All right, come on, Vicario. Come on, Vicario. Come on, Vicario, let's go. Big plays. Come on, googly Elmo. Let's go. That's my king right there. That is my king, googly Elmo Vicario. 
Come on. Oh, let's go. Constantelius now. He's got game. Oh, Skoda. Lovely touch. What a ball again by Skoda. Mikey Moore just sucks. I didn't say that. Love you, Mikey. Oh, Javi. Why? All righty. I, I want you to know I'm saying it is I, the way I'm saying his name is on purpose for the joke. I know it's not actually pronounced googly Elmo. It's pronounced gaggly Elmo. You're welcome. I'm sorry. Let's go! Come on! We just absolutely just, uh, I mean, a complete house of Chelsea. Indrik got hurt. Hope he's okay. Red card to our two star wingers both got sent out of the game. We won 3 1 from an immense performance by Simone Scotta. Great mental monster type performance to get the three points in that match, regardless of what was going on outside of it. We have the best goal difference in the league through seven matches, which is really impressive. Uh, mom, I'm scared. Okay, it's a groin strain. That's fine, dude. That's fine. Three to four weeks. We're about to hit an international break. He'll be back before you know it. That's fine. What's what does SAR stand for? Oh no, Pompey Montar Sar, dude. What? Pompey Montar Sar, right. Sorry. Oh, and the next one was so good, too. Smaps, thank you for the 14 months. I gave his first reject to home. Scored an overhead kick. First I've had an FM. Bought him for 1.5 million. He hadn't scored or really played for Spurs for four seasons. Signed him for Celtic. Posted it on your Reddit earlier today. Got to do your bit, folks. Help these Spurs rejects out. Give them a home. That's an excellent product review, Smaps. That Smaps definitely was not paid for. Thank you for supporting the stream, dude, with the 14 months. Fizzy, with a different product review, said, Dear sir, I have just taken delivery of your SAR product, which seems defective, and I was charged twice. Can I send it back for a full refund? Uh, if you read the fine print, uh, I realize that the way that the, the music hits you, you know, in the arms of an angel and all that jazz, can be a really intense emotional time. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, there is a no refunds policy uh, to the... Spurs shelter for unwanted players. Uh, you know, the, even though the message is furnished by the Spurs shelter for unwanted players, the, the money is used to fund Daniel Levy's lavish lifestyle. And then a little bit of that does eventually trickle down to the team itself. Of course, as, as you would hope, eventually a little bit does trickle down to the team itself. And uh, that's, that's the little bit that, you know, we're counting on to be able to support the remaining Spurs players that need your support financially and emotionally. But yes, hashtag adopt a spur. The home for unwanted Spurs is uh, unfortunately because of how cruel and messed up the world is, it's always open for business. So... Do you think what business do you think is on the other end of one eight hundred adopt a spur? One eight hundred adopt a spur. Thank you for calling US Bank. 
Your call may be monitored or recorded for quality purposes. Okay, guys, just because it's a bank, um, don't read too much into that, all right? I don't want you guys to read too much into that. It is still 1-800-ADOPT-A-SPUR. Uh, it is a hot lot. The bank is just helping us with the handling fees of what you pay to adopt a spur, okay? Like, it, you know, we need the bank to be involved to help handle the money uh, so that it can get to spurs in need. So, <clears throat> sorry, some of my some of my throat there. That's kind of amazing that it's actually a bank, though. One eight hundred adopt a spur is U.S. bank. Damn it, that's not America Bank. That's not my... Sir, it's the United... That's not America Bank. U.S. Bank and my America. <sighs> to, to deposit money on... <laughs> to deposit money in any of Zealand's Spurs accounts. Please stay on the line. Yes, thank you. Dang it. Adopt a San Antonio spur? Yeah, you can adopt Win Banyama, but beware that you might need to uh you might need to, you know, make some modifications to your house in order for Win Banyamas to be able to live. At least comfortably, you know. But you don't want your Win Banyamas to be confiscated by the police for you not being able to provide them the home. Central defender Matthew Platt O'Connor has had a huge improvement in his personality. Oh, his determination went way up. Nice. Oh, Sar got called up. Boo! Wimby in goal. Low key, I think if you're seven four, I'd rather have you at striker. I'm gonna be honest. The type of elevation that Wimby and then like I would rather have that dude up top. Greatest target man of all time. Seven four with like nice agility, quickness. That's crazy. Yeah, the problem with having a goalkeeper that is that tall is they just physically cannot get down fast enough to save low shots. So, yeah, he's huge, and he takes up, like, a ton of space. But, you know, you, you got to have the ability to get down quick enough. That's why goalkeeper. you know, there aren't a lot of seven-foot goalkeepers. There's, like, a nice just right height for a goalkeeper. Just logistically, <laughs> like when it comes to just being able to cover the different aspects of the job, there is a very much like too hot, too cold, just right kind of thing going on with the height of goalkeepers. Shin Yu Shin, actually decent player. Full credit, dude. Norwegian Dmitry Kanyukov. I am not a Russian sleeper agent. Duh. Marcel Friesen, nice. Okay. Tallest player I've ever had in FM? Uh, six, eight. The striker in my save I was playing on FM 17 way back in the day named Jensen from Estonia. He was like six eight two thirty. Pretty target man oriented. Am I actually playing this League Cup match with um, 24 guys in international duty? That's just what we're doing. I'm playing Brentford without my team. Do I, uh, I'm not being presented with the opportunity perhaps to uh, reschedule this here contest. So who the hell knows what's about to happen? I'm a little scared, honestly. I don't know what's about to go down. These are uh, these seven. La oh my goodness, Kazuma Konda's back. Japanese King Kazu, Kazuma Konda. He's on his way back now. 
Is the right height for a goalkeeper between like six? I would say six seven. You might already be getting a little tall, but I think like goalkeepers between six three and six six generally wear. I mean, if you just look at like if you made like a bell curve, for example, on a distribution of like goalkeepers in top five leagues and like where their height lands, it would be six three to six six is where you would see that bump. Do, 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 do. Oh, 32 dudes. Oh, I just hit the wrong button. No. <laughs> no, he says meekly while making the same mistake he's made so many times in his life already. Clicking the wrong button. Isn't O Black six foot? He's six two, so he's right. He's on the bottom. I, I, he was on the bottom end of that bell curve. And like, I mean, Courtois is what six eight, six seven. Allison's, I think, six four. Yeah, he's six four. The only goalkeeper that I think's ever in, in recent memory played for like one of the 20 biggest clubs in the world that I think is under six foot is like Keppa. Obviously, he had a bit of a weird time with that. Keppa's also just kind of a wild man, but. Iker Casillas, I thought I think he's like six two. He's six foot. He's shorter than I thought. I would have said six two. I mean, I literally I, not. I wouldn't have. I said it out loud. Oh, <laughs> you're looking at. I I thought I thought he was six two. So he, he, Iker Casillas is shorter than I thought. Yeah. But also maybe this is something that I've had pitched to me before as like an idea that perhaps it is the shorter goalkeepers that can be as good at their peak, but they deteriorate faster. Does that make sense? Because you're a little more dependent on your athletic attributes outside of your height to be able to do what you were doing. And so you deteriorate like faster. Memo? I would say Memo is like six foot. He's six one. Yeah. Buffon is taller. Six four. Navas is also taller. Oh, I would have said he was taller than Memo. He said, Kaylor Navas, he's a tall 6'1", man. Loki, thank you for the 22 ones. Keppa said, dude, Keppa, no way Keppa's 6'2". That dude looks so, sh he looks so short. Dude, he's, he's like 6'2", in the same way I'm 6'2". Well, yeah, I'm, I, maybe, but, dude, no shot. If you would have asked me if Keppa was taller than Iker Casillas, I would have bet an unholy amount of money that he was not. Oh, goodness. Keppa looks so short. He's just bad. No, but he does look short, though. Be, be, be so honest. Keppa does look really short when you watch him play. I thought he was a 5'11 keeper. I thought I remembered that being a big topic of discussion when he was the most expensive keeper in the world there for a hot sack. I thought that that was, uh, that was something that they were very, very talkative about. You know, like, oh, you know, he's not the biggest keeper. I mean, 6'2". God, if you're 6'2", you're fine. Maybe 6'2", his shoes. He's wearing those platform shoes they advertise on TikTok. Like, dude, add four inches to your height right now with these shoes, man. It's crazy. Nicolo Barella. Nicolo. Nice scouting report, dude. Yeah, Pickford 6'1. Um, I knew I knew I've wanted why he knew he was 6'1. But he's not he plays that way, though. He plays with the agility. He plays obviously as somebody that likes to play the game with his feet as well. He contributes a lot. Yeah, Kepa's listed at 6'2 on his dating profile. So true. 
So true. Gamara, dude, what the hell? Hector, you got to get off the ground this year if you want to be a squad player, man. Come on. Hector Gamara and Ashley Phillips both injured over the break. So that's no fun. You have to deal with that. Ray is six foot. Shortest goalkeeper. Kune was only 5'11? Really? Kune was really good at his uh, peak. That's South Africa's goalkeeper for a long time. I'm pretty sure he was South Africa's keeper at the 2010 World Cup. This is a hell of a name, though. Mohamed Tarmizi bin Hajimat Jahari. Um, he is a player for Brunei. That is sick. Can I? I just want to see a picture of him playing. Is that possible? Frat. Dude's built like a running back. Obviously, it's at a different level than like the Premier League, but Kune was legitimately at his very best Kune was somebody that was actually a good goalkeeper and he was five I did not know he was 5'11 so full full credit look him up and have him I don't know dude, he's 40 in real life there's no way he's still in this database Corporal Aaron thank you for the year thank you for supporting the stream how tall is Emmy Martinez oh he's big he's like 6'3 I would have said he's like 6'3". Nobody made an offer for Santi Jimenez. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hello, baby. There is interest, though, so watch this space. I'm aware that there is interest, brother. We've been staring that interest directly in the face for quite some time. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I I don't think they're going to show up and ask me about this. I think we're legitimately about to play this match with like just none of my first team here. So I don't know what this is going to look like. I would assume that Brentford is at least minorly affected by the same stuff that we are about to be affected by. Uh but I don't know. We might actually be about to get boat raced at Brentford. Uh there you know, I don't have my team right now. My team is not here. Ever watched the goal movies? Uh no. Carson Ebert stated uh, freaking $2 million got tacked onto the transfer because he made a Germany appearance. How is that guy in the German national team? Thank you very much. What year do all real players just retire? I mean, it can take a really long time. England McAvoy has now played for England. Karsten Eberts has now played for Germany. That is wild. They really don't care about this Nations League stuff at all. That Some of our pretty deep reserves are... That's what I'm saying. Not even those guys are on my freaking team right now. How the hell am I supposed to contend in this match? I am... I'm frustrated that this match is being played. I, I had no idea they could make me play this match with 21 players gone. It makes me almost feel like I missed an inbox message asking me about it, but those are hard to miss. Those, like, stop the game. They're like, hey, do you want to postpone the match? They're very obvious, very forthright about it. Abdulaziz Malki. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. Holland was the last real player. Well, like somebody like Lamine Yamal, dude. 16 at the start of the game. Like Lamine Yamal, 20 years from now, in 2044, will be younger than Ronaldo is right now. He'll be Messi's age 20 years from now. 
So they can be in the game of real, like real players. There, there is no date where like all of the real players are gone because even then they become, uh, even then they become coaches. But like in terms of being able to play, I'd say the mid 2040s, if you play a save out, is when the last real players will be gone. Yeah, Marcelo Enrique was an excellent value buy for me. That dude's going to be a $60 million defensive midfielder by the end of this season. Tripling the old value. He's also going to be one of the few players that's like actually on my team for this match because he is not in the Brazilian national team. Not yet. Enrico Del Prado, Nicolas Dominguez, Vladislav Vanat. That dude's not good enough. Victor Reyes. What? Oh, Sparta Prague got a shiny Brazilian on their team, do they? Good for Sparta Prague. I'm not jealous at all. Guy's actually not that good. The more I looked at him, just all the normal things like the Brazilian flag and the stars looking good and the price being low, but he's not actually. Maybe in a couple of years, but he's not actually that good right now. D Man, thank you for the 13 months, dude. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. Hell yeah. Continue to enjoy your lack of ads, my dude. Think about goalie height. It's the same as basketball centers. I actually think it's the other way around. I think taller goalies tend to last longer. Like taller goalkeepers tend to be able to last longer because they just are able to take up so much space. But uh, yeah, it doesn't become an issue. Kazuma Kanda, he's not ready. You know, we need to make sure that he's fit. We don't want to risk a re-injury. Dang it, Holland won Player of the Month. Simone Scotta was Young Player of the Month. Two goals and an assist in two matches. I won Head Coach of the Month because I'm awesome. Uh, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. I won Head Coach of the Month because I, I won Head Coach of the Month. Lexer, Erickson, thank you so much for the Prime. Thank you for supporting the stream. And doing it with $5 of Jeff Bezos' money, which is great. Hashtag no more a fiat for Jeff Bezos. It's a long hashtag, but a necessary one. Ah, Mexico also has a match. Why am I playing this League Cup match now? Good God, man. This is right in the middle of the international window. I had players just get called up. This can't possibly be reasonable. But at least we are able to prune a lot of our short lists. A lot of holdovers from our days at St. Etienne where a lot of these guys would have been star players. Now we're just trying to see which one of these stragglers actually makes for a decent player at the level we're at. Our scouts work unbelievably fast, though. Herodia somehow still matches the requirement. Zion, Suzuki, no. Agbadu. Sure. Oh, Dribbly Boy. Love me a good Dribbly Boy. Is it normal to get promoted twice in a row from League 2 to the championship and on the top of the league my first run? I feel like I'm suffering from success. So League 2 and League 1 are very similar levels. Uh, it's not uncommon at all. I mean, I you will for, like really well done, right? Because football man, we're talking about a game with a very high bar to entry. 
Um, and the vast majority of people that play football manager are not able to do that. But if you do really understand football manager, then league two to league one is not a big jump. Uh, now league one to the championship is a big jump. And so if you're, you, even if it's early in the season and you're a top of the championship out of league one, that is a huge achievement. Why do I know that name? But I'm not caught up on the Kanyazaris lore, but I do know the name. Is this a glitch? I mean, I'm being I'm being so serious. Is this a glitch? All right, so we have five first-team players that are uh, going to be able to play in this game. They're going to have to carry pretty hard. Uh, Santiago Jimenez is here. Um, I Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on. We, we're playing a League Cup match right in the middle of an international window. Uh, let's get rid of unavailable players and sort by ability. Who we got? Uh, Jeremy Myers, dude's not bad. Okay, Jeremy, you're playing right wing today. All right, attacking midfielder. I uh, can Ives Basuma do that anymore? Is that in the repertoire? No. Nope. I uh, can Mar Marcelo definitely can't do that. Uh, backup goalkeeper in Sayimba. Uh, backup striker Boateng. Backup winger, I guess. Sakil Stewart. Uh, Tom Dell. That this guy's been all been out of shape about whatever the hell's going on. He, he thinks he should be allowed to leave now. Dusan Yeftich. We have started in one match before as a right back. He will start there again. Uh, Kanda wasn't cleared to play. That would have been sick. But of course, if he was actually fit, he would be with Japan. So I'm gonna go with Hisham Eastmond. I mean, do they have, like, actual guys? They have Rico Henry, which sucks. They're missing guys too, though. I don't want to pretend like they're not. They're obviously missing less, but they're missing guys. This is absurd, dude. I don't think I have a left back. Kithson Jacob is uh, not the tallest guy, but he is brave. He works his butt off. I guess we're, we're going to have to use him as our other uh, center back. And then um, Kieran Berry can play a little left back. Not a lot. Uh, so we're going to do that. No nonsense.
All right, we're going to need Jimenez to be a big part of the buildup, him and more, and uh, these guys being able to kind of figure this out. So I'm going to anchor Marcel Enrique. There we go. You do that. You go here. I, I'm just going to, we're just doing a new tactic. Thank you. All right. Myers on attack. Basuma is rolling back the ears and going box to box. I hate it here. Barry is no nonsense. He's full back on defend. Yeah, if Ditch is there, you are definitely not doing anything. Um, definitely want you to take risks there, little Salas. Yep. Uh, who, who even knows what's going on? I don't even know who any of these guys are. Uh, right. So that's the uh, the goalkeeper you guys are telling me about. And he was 5'11". That makes sense they come out of Spain, too. Spain seems to value actual physical attributes less than most other, like, major serious footballing nations. Um, Mavrudis, Jesus Orial. Can play center back. I'll just have him do that. Then Downey. Uh, well, he runs. I mean, he does run. So we'll we'll have him around. Um, Platt O'Connor. At least he's naturally fit. Gowan Beagle. I mean, this is just the weirdest team we've ever put together, but. You know, maybe we get stuck in and play it tough. Maybe we can get it to pens. Uh, they, they have a better team than we do out there right now. We'll see. We might get ourselves in trouble inviting them forward. Uh, we obviously don't have a lot of fitness through the team. I'm pretty sure this is a glitch. I don't know what the hell's going on. The fact that we... Uh, That we are not rescheduling a League Cup match that's been thrown right in the middle of an international break. But, you know, let's figure out what the kids can do, eh? Let's figure out what the kids can do, eh? Let's figure it out. Gianni, though, thank you for filling me in, helping educate me. I appreciate the $5. Did it happen to Liverpool a couple years ago, James? It did? Well... Guess it happens to us. Vagic, thank you for the three months. I appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. We need all the help we can get right now. <laughs> Board expectations of the League Cup? Uh, not to lose here. <laughs> Play without pressure. Uh, I'm going to get an eye of faith with you going, especially with the younger players that can help. We need Yves Basuma, Francisco Rosales, Guglielmo Vicario, Marcelo Enrique, and Santi Jimenez. And Mikey Moore, like the guys that are actual first team players need to be immense today. We cannot get a stinker from them. They've got to be a big deal. Away against Brentford in the League Cup. Utter disaster. Scheduling wise for us. Yeah, guys, look at the team. Pick one of your non first. Who's the real star? Is it Myers? Is it Eastman, Yeftich, Jacob, or Barry? Out of the non-first team players, who's the real star that's going to emerge? Is it going to be a heroic defensive play? Is it going to be Myers' streak? I mean, he's already, it's already looking like Myers, to be honest. Eminem on the wing. Jacob looks like a big lad. 
Barry, literally a right back, just playing there because we don't have any other left backs because even England McAvoy is up in the England team at the moment. Oh, what a ball. Santi Jimenez. Oh, what a start. Oh, my goodness. It's Barry with the assist. And Santi Jimenez has scored in the opening minute. A team of kids out there for Tottenham, and Barry's found Santi Jimenez. In on goal, a moment of football magic from the Tottenham Academy boy. Oh, it's a perfect first time delivery by Berry into the space. What a touch by Santi Jimenez to open that up. Oh, Trap Deity, thank you for the five gifted. Look at Yeftich making a play. More. Eastman. Myers. Thank you for the gifted subs, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream with kindness. Giving five people the ad-free experience for a month. Giving them the bacon. Giving them the emotes. Banana, Connor, Flashed, Keg, Coney. Welcome to the Hammers. Brilliant ball by Barry. Future Tottenham superstar. Uh, you know, it's not great. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it's unfortunate. Just a classic ball right over the top. That's on our boy uh, Jacob, our left center back, lost track of that one. But to be fair, he's trying to defend like an actually, you know, an actual striker here. We're asking a lot of our team, and we know that. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to shift the way we're type marking out of our back line here. Because we, we can't have Rosales leaving where he is. Actually, what we could do is... Um, have him cover. Because that's obviously both of their goals have come from that. Just have him going uh, cover. Well, Jacob, you haven't been at your best, but that was a good tackle at least. You just let that run. I think you did. All right, match is just getting started, boys. Just getting started. Let's go. Basuma. Jimenez. God, you, you, I mean, the bad guy. Like, the, the new boys can be making mistakes. Santi, we can't have you passing it to the wrong team, okay? Nice play by Myers, who has not looked like a new guy out there. Myers. Marcelo Enrique. He's done absolutely nothing to help. Uh, Myers. Rosales. You know? Oh, my goodness. Eastman. What a pass. Eves Basuma. Come on, guys. That was good buildup. This Eastman character's actually playing like a competent player right now. Santi. Santi. Who's there? It's... Oh, Mikey. Oh, Mikey Moore. Oh. How am I doing today? I woke up good? Yeah, I got a good night's sleep last night, which is good. All right. Once they get into this position, I'm worried. Our defense is uh, a little suspect, but we've survived it, which we're just going to have to do. We're just going to have to survive it.
Nice, Jacob. Let's go get it that midfield. Now we've got Eastman. Oh, my Eastman is so good. Eastman and Myers. Look at these kids. Look at these kids. See, he's not scoring that. But well played to open that up. Myers is showing that natural explosiveness on the outside. Eastman playing really exactly the way I want the guy in that spot to play. Why is Vicario nervous? Like, what is what is what is happening? Come on. Keep your confidence. Keep playing. We've made tactical adjustments so they're not going to score the way they had been. Keep playing. It's a one-goal game. Just need that one moment to get ourselves back. We've been in the neighborhood. Uh, we, we've been closing in on producing that moment. Oh, nice. Oh. It's all right. It's better than a head, uh, better than a header backwards. Oh, good save. That ball is deflected. That is an important save. Myers is there. Oh, come on, Myers. Barry. Oh, couldn't figure it out. All right. Kiths and Jacob. Barry. Uh, up to Moore. Mikey Moore. Come on, this is what we need! And it's my it's Jeremy Myers! From Mikey Moore, and what a brilliant assist by Mikey Moore! From one Tottenham Academy product to another, it's Mikey Moore tying the Brentford defense in knots. It finds Jeremy Myers. And the kids are all right. It's 2-2. Two, two. Thank goodness. Give me that. Give me that. Oh, Jeremy. Oh, come on. Oh, well, that's an issue. Twenty-three players on international duty, and Tottenham Hotspur have got it two-two. To be fair, they do have like eleven or twelve players on international duty. Here's Mikey, Mikey Moore. It's Eastman, Eastman. <sighs> Would have loved to pass there to Myers, but Eastman's he's been good. His touch has been better in the match than his attributes would indicate, which I have appreciated. Yeftich, oh Rosales, oh. Little Salius hits the post. Sub. Uh, Kiths and Jacob is off. Marcelo Enrique is playing center back now. Our defensive midfielder will be Hmm. There's a dude with the work rate. Jeff Downey. Can't actually play defensive. Now you can play center back and center mid, but defensive midfield might as well be the frontier to him. All right, we're going to put Eves Basuma back there, and I'm going to do something crazy. No, this is stupid. I'm going to put Maxima. You can't play back. Well, Who's that? Oh, that's Maximus Sergeant. All right, Goin Beagle. You're playing defensive midfield, Goin. I freaking believe Goin. I believe Goin. I believe Goin Beagle. I believe. All right, Abbott. What are we thinking here? Okay, that'd be... Hey, can we make that freaking change? Can we get Kiths and Jacob off, please? Thank you. 
He is having a real tough time with Toddy Castellanos, which is not his fault. Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's a goal kick. Nothing else. We're fine. Everything is fine. Is there a winner out there? Is there a winning moment out there on this field? That is my question to you. Who is going to help us win this game? All right, Richmond, you're off. Uh, Maximus Sargent is in, which is just an explosively awesome name. Uh, Akil Stewart is available. So's Bernard Boateng. But we're not subbing out Santi Jimenez because he's just way better. Now, Jeremy Myers does have a goal. Jeremy Myers is the best academy guy we had coming into this. So, no. Going Beagle's going to hang on to it. Maximus Sargent in for Hisham Easton. Come on, Maximus. Come on, Maximus. Give me, give me, a, give me that moment of magic. A Maximus Sargent dime piece. All right. Uh, we do have three subs. Anybody got decent penalty taking? Uh, Bernard Boateng, Yanis Mavrudis, and Jeff Downey. Okay, so Yanis Mavrudis, Jeff Downey, Bernard Boateng. Uh, Yanis Mavrudis, you are going to get... Uh, going. Bernard Boateng, you are going to get... I think it was, is it Jeremy Myers? He's got a decent uh, decent shot on him. Mikey Moore is actually an atrocious penalty taker. So we'll go ahead and get him off for um, Bernard Boateng. And Jeff Downey was the other one. How's Maximus Sargent's penalty taking? It's eight. Yeah, we'll leave Downey out. All right, you two, you two dudes, you're in. Nice. Okay. Do, 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 do. Vicario's freaking seventh. That's crazy. Yeftage. No, we didn't get Mikey more off. Oh, come on. We didn't get Mikey more off. All right, Chad, here we go. Name's Jeff. Thank you for the 17 months. I appreciate you. My girlfriend told me to stop acting like a flamingo, so I had to put my foot down. I, that, that was an A minus. That was a good one. I like that one. Vicario. We made it to Pens with 23 players on international duty. Stay calm. Be positive. We will be fine. All right. We're going first. It's Santi. Santi Jimenez. Oh. That was our best taker, so it goes up from here. Veerman, easy, Vicario. Well, I mean, that was their best taker. We're fine. I have 23 players on international duty. The FM gods need to be nice. All right, Eves. Come on, Eves. Eves. So I saw him moving that way and I was like, please. Now it's Tati Castellanos. Oh, big, big goal by Eves Basuma, the veteran in a team of children. Googly Elmo Vicario. The Googles. No. Oh, I saw him going the right way. Oh, the Googs. Dang it. Okay, now it's Jeremy Myers, the best academy prospect that we have, uh, who did score today. 
Jeremy Myers. Three up. Jeremy. Goal! Big goal by old Jeremy Myers. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's the Van Persie. Guglielmo Vicario against the Van Persie. And, oh, he was going the wrong way. Come on, Guglielmo. We need you. You're the captain today. Maximus Sargent. The academy product and midfielder is the fourth taker. Maximus. Banger. Absolute banger of a pen. And he's dropping a bow, Selly. Oh. Maximus Sergeant Stone Cold right there. Oh, all right, Vicario. Let's get it. Come on. Come on, Vicario. Big saves. Big saves. Oh, yes! Vicario saves it at sudden death. Go on, googly elbow. And now it's actual first team player. Defensive midfielder, 21-year-old Brazilian, Marcelo Henrique. <sighs> oh, what a pen. That's the leadership we need from our actual first team players in a moment like this. What a pen for Marcelo Enrique. Jose Maria. If Vicario stops it, we are through. And he does! Oh, the kids have won it! In penalties at Brentford with 23 players on international duty. Tottenham has won. Back-to-back -back saves from Googly Elmo himself. The Elmo. Oh. I don't know how we've done it, chat, but we have done it. Oh, I need a celebratory song. Oh, I need a celebratory song. This is the new history of the Tottenham right here, baby. It's all we do. All we do is win. I won't stop now. Why would I? We're the new Tottenham. What a win. 23 players on international duty. We call up all the kids. It doesn't matter. We dominate. Let's go, dude. Oh, oh, what a, what, what a time to be alive. Koyo Tate, thank you for the seven months. Fenn, thank you for the gift and sub to Siga. Siba, thank you for the 31 months. Love you, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. <sighs> what a stupid match. That must have been a glitch. I don't know why we were playing that match. 23 guys on international duty. My next match is in 17 days. What? Why did we not just play the freaking match here, dude? Did you see this schedule? Does it have like an open week when we get back? Uh, we'll use that as a nice recovery point. A lot of people are going to need that. We're not going to schedule a friendly or anything. We'll let everybody get like fully up to speed because then we're going to go into a, a pretty frantic rush here on the back end of October. Yeah, dude, I don't know why 
I like we just played that match then, but you know what? I don't care because we won. We got a lot of you. Know, we allow a lot of kids some first team experience. Jeremy Myers is a legit fringe first teamer. Yo, child detective. So you're how we found all those kids in our youth academy. Thank you very much. Thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Who who got it? Oliver, Shiny, Bog, Zivro, Just, Just Lurking. You all have bacon now. You all have the ad-free experience. Just be sure to say thank you. I know you're just lurking, but one must observe proper decorum when receiving a gifted sub and bacon and emotes and all that jazz. What are Meyer's attributes? Uh, they're pretty good, actually. He's not a bad player. He's not okay. Don't get me wrong. He's not a good player. He's not somebody but like he could play in the championship, no problem. They say he's a decent League One player. Given he's 18 years old, I'd say he's a championship level player. He was the best youth player, like by attributes that we had up there. Come on. Oh, Coyote with the pulled hammy, dude. What is going on? That's three players injured on the international duty, or at least two. I think three. Ridiculous. Kazuma Konda's there. Santi Jimenez doesn't need to be playing in this this absurd match in the U21 Premier Division Cup. Absolute absurdity. Thank you, RJ. Long wool. Obviously not if it's hot outside, but the, the, the type of sock I like wearing the best. Long wool sock, and it's cold outside. Hopefully that was the answer you were looking for. It is the right one. That's the correct answer. Thank you. Okay. Oh, good. What's the best type of sock? It's a tough one. Now, if we're talking best type of bagel, you know what I did this morning? Hey, Zealand, what did you do this morning? I went to a bagel shop, got a New York bagel, and I saved the second half of it for the stream. Now, let me tell you when I say I am, for most poor, like for most things, I'm still a Florida man. I feel like a tourist living in New York, but I am elitist about New York in one area, the bagels. I just want you to look deep into the eyes of this bacon, egg, and cheese right now. Look at that. The bacon hanging out of the back. Oh, my goodness. The, the, the everything bagel. Toasted just enough. Oh. Good morning, Milia. All my players are getting injured. What can I do? Lower your training intensity. And if it is one or two players that keep getting re-injured, lower their individual training intensity in the individual training screen for a little while. But one of the most important things for me is to go to training, rest, and then you can change, like, your automatic assignment. I don't like them training it in. You know, they can do double intensity when they're high, but if you have real serious team-wide issues, take that to normal. But no pitch or gym work for people that are, like, very tired. And there's a uh, skins folder. Like, if you open the football manager folder, there's a skins folder right here. Somebody was asking where you download your skin files into. First of all, you probably just use lotion, right? You shouldn't be downloading skin off the internet. That's like trying to download more RAM, you know? It only works like half the time. And so, but it, like if you have to download some skin off the internet, then you want to put it in the skin folder on FM. 
There, there is already one. You don't even have to make one. It's already there. Can you overdo training praise? You used to be able to. I don't think you can anymore. What can happen is that you have, like, a player training it at 8.0 and maybe they think they shouldn't be praised for it. Well, then, you know, only praise them when they train higher than that. I have four dudes rehabbing. Totally normal things. All right, Mastin Tuano. Just don't get hurt. This is Pizza Cup. This is EFL Trophy. We all know how important the Pizza Cup is to the lore of this channel. Man, I, I don't know how to describe the feeling of we've been promoted to such a bigger job and now I can just like prune my short lists. It's like having a well-maintained garden, you know, pruning the short list. Now only o the only people we're seeing on the short list are players that you would actually maybe be interested in signing that could help the team at some point. You just see what I just saw? Were you were you dialed in? Were you paying attention? Did you just see what made me really sad? The asking price on Ivan Alves after his release clause expired is $200 million. $200 million. Now, they won't be able to get him to agree to a new contract as long as I'm lurking around, but his contract runs a few years, so not much we can do there. Two hundred million. <coughs> now, dude, don't let the um. Don't let the asking price now fool you. 83 was a fair price, but it wasn't like an incredible bargain either. 200 million is the, we think this guy's great and we don't want to sell him under any circumstances price that they are putting out. They won't be able to keep him. They'd have to sell him eventually, but the issue is that somebody is probably eventually going to launch like under 20, under 30 million at him. And that is not an amount of money that I would be willing to throw at Yvonne Alves, you know? It's just not... So to start a new save after the update, decided to go journeyman. Started out uh, rolling out with Yokohama. Wait, did we lose? Yes, we lost to Northampton. And uh, dang it, we need to we need to beat Exeter City in our final friggin' match. It is actually amazing how quickly my 
scouting department is getting through that entire list. Like, what are we at now? They've literally knocked out 100 guys in the last two weeks. Just, I mean, like, speed running my short list. Updating. Nicolay Al Sleen, sick name. It's amazing how many pretty good professional players there are on the planet, you know? <laughs> like guys that are just very passably high level professional players. Don't look out of place playing in a, a big five league. But not good. Not good at that. Like, just able to be there. Just able to be there, having a good time. Hanging out. Let's see, have you ever been to Germany? And if so, what's your favorite thing, Ben? There is a restaurant in Frankfurt, because I'm usually flying out of Frankfurt, called the Hans Wagner. Traditional German fare, long wooden tables. Not a brow house, but like restaurant. They've got a Wiener Schnitzel with the sauerkraut cooked inside of the batter. And they've got like, I, it's literally just Wiener schnitzel with the sauerkraut cooked into it. And then like mashed potatoes. And then I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I think it's just apple wine in German. I think it's just Apfelwein. So good. So it's my favorite single thing in Germany. On personal experience, it's that restaurant in Frankfurt. The Apfelwein. Yeah, so it's just apple wine and Wiener schnitzel with sauerkraut and mashed potatoes. And it is a good. I levitate off the table when they lay it down in front of me. I start floating. I reach the ethereal plane, right? So I usually, because I fly out of Frankfurt, I've never actually spent too much time in Frankfurt. But what I'll just do is I'll get there the night before and just go to the, just go to the, 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 the I think it's Franz Wagner. I don't know. I have it in a note thing on my phone. So yeah, I would say that's, that's my favorite thing about Germany, just personally. Guten Tag! Come on, play with me. You guys annoy me all the time. Oh, fine. Whatever. Yeah, it was the Adopt a Spur hotline. They just call me like four times a day and they don't even want to play. They just want to call me and try and buy my lands. My generational lands. Ah, uh, another match that Kazuma is not going to play in. Dude, Rosales has a bruised shin. Look at this injury report, dude. 
Rosales and Simone Scott. I just got added to it in a freaking day or two. Like, nobody is healthy at all. Zeal never tried any German meals. I've had currywurst. I've had bratwurst. I haven't had whatever that third thing is. Um, German meat. I haven't had German meatballs and caper sauce. Currywurst is drunk food. Bratwurst is awesome. But then again, like any meat like that's not overcomplicated and it's just kind of cooked well is going to be a banger. I, li I love bratwurst. Give me bratwurst, sauerkraut. And maybe some fries or mashed potatoes. I'm in, I'm in heaven. Love that. Great. Bebel Senior, thank you for the 25 months. Yeah, but I feel like Germany also is a place that's going to have a lot of regional meals, right? You're going to get a lot of regional fare in Germany. So it kind of depends on where you are as to what's like the, well, if you had this sort of dish there. So it's kind of the same as the U.S. Go down on. Donor kebabs. I, I, I'll be honest. I never loved donor kebabs. Like the shave it off the big rotating thing. And, you know, that was never like my first choice. I'll eat it and I like it. But it was never the thing that I like gravitated towards. Like in those moments of dire need. In those moments where I was like, I need food now. At this moment, like my entire life hinges on the ability to eat this food right now. Uh, and I, and in those moments, I, I never quite gravitated to the donor kebab. We even have those in, uh, we have those in New York. The halal guys. <laughs> Literally call them the halal guys. There, I mean, there's, a, there's also a chain called halal guys. They're banned from you. I mean, I know that, like, England's really into kebabs because they couldn't come up with their own, like, late-night food, which is a fair point. But my favorite, like, I lived. In, I went to Oxford for about three months as an exchange program, so I've, I've lived a bit in England, particularly. And my favorite thing was there was this Moroccan dude that would set up outside uni college, and he would fries or chips – with like, I guess it was some sort of mayonnaise sauce, I don't really know, and cheese. It was amazing. Like, it answered every prayer every time with, un with startling consistency. And I wore a Moroccan jersey one time, and, he, and so we bonded pretty early on. Um, and he was great just for late night food. Like, not, I'm not even talking about like coming back from the bar or something. I'd be like... I'm like in the middle of studying and I'd stop by for some chips and cheese, you know? Ugh. Ugh. So even when I was, the, the point though is that even when I was there, I found like a different late night food that I gravitated towards than the, uh, the kebab. Now the most disgusting late night food I've ever had was also in the UK, but it was in Scotland. I went to a... Well, here, it's actually in a YouTube video we made. The food is highlighted, along with my friend Adam, who just needs to be... He's a streamer. He doesn't do it full-time or anything. He just kind of does it when he wants. Um, but he's somebody I met a long time ago. He's very... Uh, Zealand. What am I doing? I'm just like... I'm, what, what, do you, what do I think I'm... I'm literally not subscribed to myself, dude. <sighs> 
I, I, I'm not even subscribed to myself. I really, I, I, I need to, <laughs> I, I need to get better at this whole being a creator thing. I'm on the Zealandism account right now, and this is, I, this is the Zealand page. Not even subscribed to myself. Uh, yeah, I, I need to stat pad better. Uh, Scotland. Okay, so at the end of this video, Adam, who's one of the three funniest people I know, took us out late night, and he did us the service of describing the food that we got after going to a match at Hamden. Honestly, pretty fun video if you've not watched it. Uh, I'll I'll give it an up. I'll give it an up, dude. Okay. All right. We have a beautiful double jumbo battered sausage here. Right? Beautiful. Yeah. And then we all, over here we have a, a pizza fried <laughs> pizza with chips Good. because you need a bit more beige. Yeah, and then course. on your side you've got um, a mess. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I mean fish, fish. Oh, fish. oh okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish they and can chips. Believe it out, a it? classic yeah. chippy, ten out of ten. Beautiful meal, really good fats. Uh, delicious, would recommend. It's healthy. So that was what um, that yeah that was what we ate that night, uh, and it was classic. tentatively fried pizza, fried sausage, uh, and this was the fish and chips. This was the nastiest thing I've ever eaten. I've eaten a fried scorpion before. This was the nastiest thing. I woke up in the middle. I Look, I'm an American. Fatty food, fried food, that's my... I'm, I sit in there all day. That's in my wheelhouse. I'm hitting home runs with that stuff. I was... Like, when you're born in Florida, they take you to McDonald's and baptize you in the fries like cooker before they put it over the heat, you know? They dip you in the oil and they're like, long may you reign, you know? That's... This is what I do. And I woke up in the middle of the night after eating this and was like Listerining for 20 minutes straight because I could not get the oil that was stuck at the back of my like throat. I could not get it out. It was like stuck back there. And it was made so much worse. Undoubtedly, the reason was because I was getting sick, actually. And so... On the drive down from Scotland to Wales, I had a sore throat. And so I ate this right as I was getting a sore throat. And I ended up getting strep. And <laughs> it's just like, it was the worst, com like, it was just the worst combination of possible things uh, that could have happened. But as an American that, like, I can eat McDonald's all day, twice on Sunday, won't even feel it, right? Like, I, I, I've been to state fairs where they deep fry Coca-Cola, right? And I ate it, and it was sick. It was awesome. Sick in a good way. Uh, but the chippy, and I think it was called Blue Lagoon. I think it's a chain. It was heinous. Heinous. How do you deep fry a liquid? You put it in the batter and then just fry the batter. So you like make the batter with Coca-Cola and then fry it. Literally just a ball of the batter. And then you pour Coca-Cola on it. It's how they made it. State fairs are great. If you ever want to be like, hey, what's the part of America that I don't get to see? Uh, go to a state fair. Love them. State fairs are awesome. Pretty sure I got a concussion on one of the rides one time. Like, legitimately, my mom is still convinced. We did one of those Gravitron rides where, like, it, you know, it spins in a circle really fast. And it was going so fast that we were, like, messed up for a few days afterwards. Like, that, th there's, there's no safety code to this. They just spin you really fast. And if it actually ends up being a terrible thing for your brain, then, nah, whatever. State fair's gone after that, so... Yeah, I've been to the Florida State Fair a few times. Um, fried Oreos, legitimately amazing. Like, the fried Coca-Cola is kind of like a novice thing. It wasn't actually that good. It's just like, yo, oh, fried Coca-Cola. That's interesting, right? But the the fry, fried Oreos, legitimately amazing. They're really, really good. Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, well, I the best one, somebody started frying corn dogs, and I'm like, dude. A corn dog is already a fry. Like, what? <laughs> it's already what it is. 
All right, what do you what do you, what do you mean you're frying a corn dog? That's just a really fat corn dog. Fried pickles are great. Oh, fried pickles are fantastic. Dude, you get fried pickles, you start dipping them in ranch. Literally anything that's not a dessert fried, dip it in ranch and it's great. Nothing goes with fried food like ranch. Ranch dressing. Or maybe where you're from, that's called American sauce. It's that white sauce with, like, the black specks of pepper in it. That stuff is gas on anything that's fried. Fried pickles, fried whatever. Fried tomatoes, like, anything that people fry that's not a dessert, throw some of that on there, thank me later. All right. Ranch is awesome. They had a fried cheesecake at the Texas State Fair. I got to imagine the Texas State Fair is, like, so big, it's almost ironic. You know? <laughs> like, they're teetering on almost being a caricature of themselves because they're leaning into the fact that it's the Texas State Fair so much. All right. Indrick, di Indrick literally didn't miss a match. Which, Well, sorry, he missed one match. That is kind of incredible, though. He, okay, it's Vuskovic, so it's not the end of the world, but still not fun that we continue to pick up dudes just getting weird injuries like that. All right, Coyote, I'll get your rehab for a few days. No, God. Kanda, man, you were just coming back. We've got an issue with injuries for our Japanese wonder kid. King Kazu, his introduction continues to be delayed. He tore his hamstring and then pulled his groin. He's now out for another week. We are going to have to really baby him back up the fitness here. We're going to really have to baby him back up the fitness. We want to make sure we get his sharpness. I'm talking 45 minutes, then 60 minutes, then 90 minutes with the youth team. Like, completely babying him back up. All right, but Diaz Palacios. You yeah, absolutely, yeah, every time somebody says America doesn't have culture, I just show them a picture of a fried Oreo and they have no comeback, probably because they're dying from heart failure. But that's okay. That's all part of the process of Americanization. <laughs> uh. No, we had a bunch of guys injured. Honestly, this whole off week, I made fun of I was making fun of the schedule, but it was greatly appreciated. It's allowed it it's allowed us to recover our uh, recover a lot of ourselves. It's been really 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 good week off. Now don't do it again. But I don't want to play another league cup match with 23 guys on international duty, but Actually, not as bad as you're trying to make him seem. Now, this guy, Sadiq, he sucks. Caceres. Actually, in awe of how quickly my scouting department is turning this stuff out. I mean, in this whole, like, international break thing that we've just gone through, I have scouted 150 people. They've finished the reports on, I, I mean, it might even be more than that. Akihito Shiratori has an incredible pace, so we're going to give him a chance to prove himself. Juan David Cabral, maybe a few years ago, dude. Maybe just a few years ago. It's actually quite good and not that expensive. You are all speed, but honestly, all speed can make the dream work sometimes. Have you seen the clip of Weston McKinney telling uh, Chiellini that he dips his pizza in ranch? Look, all I, all I will say, all I will, look, all right, all right. All I will say is all I'm going to say. Literally the only thing I'm going to say is don't knock it until you try it. Oh, that's all I'm going to say. 
That's all I'm going to say. Because if you take one of them old school, like, Domino's takeout pizzas and you dip it in ranch, it gets better. It does. I don't even know if I like that fact, but it does. He's not kidding. I, now, if you, you know, here's the difference. If you take a pizza that you get in Italy with the fine ingredients and, like, you know, the cheese is, like, actually cheese and not something that was produced in a factory in Tajikistan, but, like, actual, you know, mozzarella on there with, like, basil and the sauce is, like, real, you know? And you dipped that in ranch, it would make it worse. But if you take one of those, like, conveyor belt pizzas and you dip that in ranch, it gets better. It's It gets a lot better. It does. No, and I, look, I look, there's always a place for, like, a a pizza hut or a Domino's, you know, sometimes you just need a real rock solid B minus pizza. Uh, like living in New York, there's some great pizzas, but the type of pizza, like I've been to Italy and the type of pizza they eat there, fresher ingredients obviously is, you know, better like on its, on its own. In a lot of ways, you can get some really good pizza in the U S too, but it's usually sloppier for lack of a better term, right? Sloppier pizza. Um, the pizza that you get in Italy, if you tried to dump, like, as long as it's not, like, cheap takeout, if you tried to dunk that in ranch, it would not it would not get better. You'd make it worse. So I understand Chiellini's disgust on multiple levels. Like, I do get it. But he's got to understand Weston McKinney's growing up in Houston, Texas, getting Domino's for dinner. Or, like, you're at school lunch, and they give you pizza that is legitimately rubber that they heat it up in the microwave. I used to dip that stuff in ranch dressing all the time. All the time. And it would get better. Now, Rico, how many more days do you have on this playing time promise, brother? I've ever tried a French eat. I don't even know what that is. Uh, the U.S. in general is a bit sloppy, and that doesn't have to be a bad. You know, I, I, I actually talk about this in a video that's about to come out. Uh, not about to come out, but it's going to come out sooner rather than later. Um... And that the United States has a superiority and an inferiority complex. Like every, like the United States is aware it's less refined than a lot of other countries, and kind of wears that as a bad, like as a badge of pride. Like the fact that we're rougher around the edges is like what makes us great and why they suck, sort of like thing. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun video when that comes out. A narcissistic imposter syndrome. No, I think I, I think we're geographically mandated to be really self-absorbed and yeah I know every, every country is different the U.S. has developed on its own kind of for for all, a while so but uh, the only reason I thought that was interesting is because you said something like yeah the U.S. is rough around the edges but that's not a bad thing yeah I would agree with that statement it is just different How about Brazilian pizza? I've never been to Brazil. I've actually never been to Brazil. So I couldn't tell you. They might be serving pizza at some of those Brazilian steakhouses that are all over the place in the U.S. now. I don't know, but I have not been to Brazil. Man City's won every match they've played this year. Dude, can they just not? Because it, it looks like we might actually have a pretty good team this year. Can they just not <laughs> do that? That'd be great. All right, let's quick pick the team and get rid of the youth teams. And we are so back. Rosales, Anasio, Rico, Vandeven, Basuma. Oh, yeah, we're on the wrong tactic. Well, that makes sense. Okay, uh, that, you're on attack. You're there. Romo. Tell me we don't have anybody better than Romo to stick out there. I mean, I guess Conda's like, Conda's working on it. His bravery is down to seven, but we didn't lose too much of him yet. Ashley Phillips trying to... Okay, this is a mess. Uh, we have Constantelius. Yes. Endrick is in. Somehow he is literally already cleared to play, which is crazy. We have Champions League away against Benfica. I feel like we can rotate a little bit. I'm going to go Mikey more over Endrick for this match, though. Aneka Romo out for Constantelius. Yanis Constantelius. Then Seca more... Constantelia. Yeah, we, did, we didn't lose a lot of match sharpness either. I guess Rico we did. Rosales, does he not start for them? 
All right, Santi Jimenez is going to play. Okay, no. Rejevich, Doig, KO Day. Those guys got to move down one. Aneka Roma is going to go here, and then we need a center back sub. It's going to be Ashley Phillips, who's like kind of cleared, but not really. 45 minutes, that's fine. Vushkovic is not cleared at all. Rejevic, Enrique, Indrik, and Eka Ramos. Go to yeah, okay. We got a good team going out there today. We can play our confident tactic. Try and really take it to them. Manu Marlanes. Feels weird, dude. We haven't played a match in like two and a half weeks. And the one match we did play, we didn't have our first team. We haven't played a match with our first team out there for like three weeks. Uh, but that's a good reset. Not going to have the fatigue issues a lot of other teams are going to have because of that. And we freaking won. The League Cup match. You got to come to Brazil? Dude, I, I mean, I'm obviously going to go to Brazil at some point, right? With the videos that we're making and my love of travel and my hope to, you know, hopefully one day maybe have a TV show or have a YouTube channel that's big enough that we can travel for, like, every video we make. Then Brazil's going to be a lot of those stories. But... Where do I think Benfica would finish in the Prem? Mid-table. Like, maybe Crystal Palace, bottom half of mid-table. Uh, justify your recent praise. Like, 12th or 13th. Now, if you're t it's a different, so, it's a different question. Like, if you take the best 11 players on Benfica, Right, and you put them up against the best 11 players of Wolves. Benfica's probably going to win that game. But the Premier League and the way the schedule is done in England, where you have multiple cups, right, especially if Benfica's, like, playing in Europe, right, the schedule is crazy. And you need, more, like, you need, they, you know... It's not Benfica's fault that their team is not built for that, but it's not. Oh, come on now. Oh, get it, Bellarmino second. That is a superstar's goal by the Portuguese star boy. Left back roll change. Good God, you're right. Sorry, Mickey. Check everything else. Make sure I didn't jack anything else up while I was messing around with it. Totally just didn't see that. Obviously, it didn't matter for the first goal, but thank you. No, like, I'm not meaning to disrespect Benfica at all, but I, I think the disrespect, nor like, because I think if you put Benfica in the French League, I think they're finishing in the Champions League. I think the issue is the number of matches you have to play in England is the highest of the top five leagues in the teams in England. I mean, every single team in the Premier League has more money they're able to spend under FFP than Benfica is. And so I, I think the the disrespect is really, if anybody's disrespected in this scenario, it's the middle third of the Prem is so much better than people like kind of assume that it is. You got West Ham out here winning the conference league. Like, any English team that makes it into a European competition is always right at the top of it. But now you get no winter break. You're playing these competitions through the whole year. You got midweeks all over the place, especially if Benfica's upholding its European schedule. You got midweeks, like, all over the place like crazy. I think Benfica, yeah. I said mid-table and then was, like, well, like Crystal Palace where they're – you know, somewhere between 10th and 13th. Now, if you gave Benfica the same income level as Tottenham, we'd be having a different, you know, conversation, obviously. But... 
That does, it's just not the way any of it works under the FFP stuff. It's over the line. I mean, if you ever need evidence of like how good the Premier League is, you watch the championship in teams like Burnley. I mean, how many people were talking about how good Vincent Company's Burnley was in the championship? About how they were playing beautiful football and he changed the game. Well, that team showed up in the Premier League and got absolutely rocked. Right? They haven't been near it this year. They're giving up eight goals a match. Like, you know, they 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 needed to add more people. Like, they, they needed to add more people, obviously. I'm happy with how we've dominated possession so far. Yes. I'll do that. You said Benfica be eighth in the Prem based off revenue. If that's true, that is insane. Like, that's actually absurd if that's true. That's so high. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been Benfica and Serie A. I think they make Europe. I think you're probably below Inter, AC Milan, Juventus. This year, I would say probably be below like Lazio. Uh, but definitely top seven. You know, I'm just picking teams that I think over the course of a season would probably finish ahead of them. Definitely, I mean, definitely Inter. They're not getting anywhere near Inter. Inter's having an amazing year. Oh, get in, son! Mikey Moore makes it 2-0. Tottenham Hotspur keep cooking. What about Benfica? Just put Benfica everywhere. What about Benfica in the Bundesliga? I'm probably a little worse than Serie A. Bundesliga's definitely been cooking recently. Obviously, Leverkusen's popping off. Bayern's Bayern. Dortmund's a bit down, but I think maybe me jousting with them. Leip Leipzig's been really good. How did that not go in? Benfica, Benfica and MLS, second behind Inter Miami. Actually, thanks for asking. All right, give me a... Uh, I get Javi Guerra. I go Eves Basuma and just run him on support. Be a little bit more chill about this. And Bellarmino Seca, we're going to drop for Ginny's Regevich. Seca's first goal was amazing. I mean, that's just, that's the type of goal that we can get out of old Bellarmino Seca that we're hoping we get a lot more of. And let's just let Indrik run around for like 27 minutes. Just so we can get a little match sharpness back, get the sea legs under him after that injury where we were sitting out a lot of the training sessions we were doing. That'd be nice. God, I wish we hadn't lost to City. I wish we had our full, like, team when we were playing City because we, uh, you know, it's very early in the year, obviously, eight matches played, but we're looking like we're going to be trying to chase their coattails. Endrick, Endrick, Endrick! Oh! Ah. Jackson, thank you for the 25 months. Uh, I appreciate you supporting the stream. What's my opinion regarding DeAndre Edlin? Good player. I think he's always been a good player. I think he ha he plays the game really well between the years. Uh, obviously, he's a tremendous athlete. I think he's also got like good aggression, bravery, very tough player. I think especially in an era where the U.S. national team, like the era before the one we're in now, was a little scared. At times, he was always a guy that could help bring us back and kind of elevate our level up again. I, I think he, if he wasn't American and getting paid millions to play in MLS, I think he'd still be having a decent career playing for, like, Galatasaray or something. He's, he's a good player. Yedlin's always been a good player. And he, he, he's, he, yeah, he's Walmart Kyle Walker, exactly. He's, 
He talks some trash on the field. He's very tough, not afraid to put in a challenge. And obviously, like, you know, outside of all of those kind of mental attributes, he's got the physical gift of just being a really fast dude. <laughs> no, come on, guys. Dester DeAndre, I kind of wish I could combine them. I really do. I mean, national team wise, Dest is our starting right back for the next however many years. That's just what he is. Um, I think I am not opposed to what we have done in the past where Dest starts the game. And then if it becomes a certain type of game, especially one that we need to see out late, I bring in Yedlin. Uh, but I think Yedlin might be done with the national team. You know, he's getting kind of old, and I don't, I, I, Burhalter. Yedlin went to the World Cup, but I, I don't think he is going to be a part of the team going forward after that World Cup. He's, I, what is he, 32? Desta Robinson, they're very similar players. Obviously, they use the opposite foot, but. Ah. Uh, Dest always plays left back at PSV. Yeah, because Dest is a winger. Clo he's like, he's Walmart Trent. <laughs> he is a he is a he is an attacking player disguised in the fullback position, right? Like he he he's a gifted attacking player. Dester Benfica, thank you for bringing it all together. Good win. Taking care of business at Southampton. We got up early, got a second goal in to make it comfortable towards the end. That is a good result. Bellarmino Seca's early goal, absolutely brilliant. And, uh, and, yep, that sets us up for a little Champions League jaunt. Speaking of Benfica chat, we've got a road trip planned. Ooh, goody. We're going to Portugal, boys. Do, 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 do. Yo, Rich, thank you for the three months. I appreciate the prime. Thank you for supporting the stream, and thank you for doing it with $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Do I like IndyCar? I like the Indianapolis 500. I don't really follow any racing sports closely. It just wasn't something I got into when I was a kid. I've watched Drive to Survive. I understand F1. I understand NASCAR. I don't really understand IndyCar, like in terms of how the whole thing works. But uh, I do like the, the Indianapolis 500 is a good American tradition. You know, you throw it on TV during the day and you're like, ah, cars going in circles. But the circle is like oblong. So it's better. Hell yeah. All right, Kazuma Kanda still not actually cleared for activity. Is this the match on? No, this is the day before. Okay, where's Ashley Phillips? I'm going to give him 45 minutes. We need to get him back to match sharpness as much as, much as possible. Is it, yeah, will you stop it, Ashley? I am just talking about trying to get you all match sharp, and you go get a tight hamstring. Yo, it's Jaden Philogene, the Internet's favorite winger. Nice. Anybody else notice that the uh, goal he scored was totally deflected? It's a sick move, but I feel like Philogene's going to get a $50 million Premier League move based off that. Ginge, thank you for the four months. Appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. Enjoy your ad-free experience. Any thoughts so far on the NCAA conference tournaments? No, but I've been watching. Been some fun buzzer beaters. Uh, you know, the March Madness is next week. Don't worry, I'm going to be insufferable. I'm going to talk about it a lot. I love March Madness. Outside of the World Cup, it is my favorite sporting event. Yay, Lewis dropped his lack of playing time concerned. And the world rejoiced. We got leadership support and club atmosphere. Hell yeah. Yes, the Stetson Hatters did make March Madness for the first time. They won, I think, the Atlantic Sun Conference. I don't know. Because if you win your local conference, you get an automatic trip to the tournament. So a lot of the small conferences are playing their tournaments like right now so they can get national attention for them. 
And I'm, I'm watching every night. I'm watching uh, conference tournament basketball. Just a lot of fun. Do I like the new Champions League format? I don't dislike it. It makes a lot. It's actually fairer than the whole group system. Because in the group system, like if you're a pot one team, you didn't have to play another pot one team in the group stage. But now everybody has to play. I know, I know why they did it, and they didn't do it for the right reasons. They did it to create two more matches and earn the revenue from that. But I, I don't like. I don't hate the new Champions League. Every team plays two teams from each pot. Uh, I think it creates. You know, the final day is going to be unbelievably chaotic because there's so many teams in one table and not a lot of matches to separate them. Did I see Minnesota pull their goalie in hockey overtime? Yes. That was a sick move. L like, analytically, it also makes sense. I hope more teams do that in the future. That was really cool. Did I play championship manager? No, I, I started playing FM in 2014. So I started playing FM. I, 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 would, I got the game 10 years ago. I was not playing it until, like, 2016. So I've been playing FM for about eight years. Uh, but it's not exactly the most marketed thing ever in the United States. So I'm kind of a happy accident, I think, for SI and football manager. Not a very common thing in the U.S. I mean, it is called football manager. So. Richard Vig, how you doing? It's a Super League, if you think about it. Yes. So the funny thing is the latest proposal for a Super League is actually very similar. Very similar to the Champions League format that's about to be introduced. And they're literally just trying to create it in a way where the clubs can get more of the money and UEFA doesn't get as much of the money. Which, fair play. But the way they introduced the Super League initially, where they were going to pull a bunch of teams out of their domestic leagues, uh, they are never going to be able to get anything to actually work under the name the super league even though the super league they've most recently proposed is legitimately just two more matches on top of what the champions league is already switching to so it's all a bit confusing if you ask me would make a lot of sense up in here <sighs> champions league benfica But I am going to start, yeah, I'll start Inacio. He's a little tired, though. We might need to rest him for a day or two during our, like, through our harder training routines. Basuma, Vigera. Oh, yeah, Jimenez is, like, freaking not registered, so. <laughs> oh, George is back. Hell yeah, dude. Big George guy. Big George guy. Chikichi, what's up? Indrik, you are also into the starting lineups so of Skoda, Chikichi, Indrik, Seca, Guerra, Basuma, Fix Vandevin real quick, Inacio, Rosales, Lewis, uh, Vicario. Awesome. Awesome. How much was, was, oh, he doesn't need to be cleared. He's fine. Okay. All right, Doig. Looks like you got a clean bill of health here, buddy. For the UCL, you have to qualify each year. Yeah, but I mean the like the number of matches and what it would actually do, and also not true. Well, I mean, what you said is true, but the Super League that they most recently proposed, technically any team could end up in it eventually. It is also based off, like, previous performance. <laughs> like, you can qualify into the Super League. They, it, I'm, I'm not, I, I broke it down. There's not a huge difference between the new Champions League that starts next year and the Super League. The Hammer is back. Yes, him and Indrik are back in the lineup today. George Shikichi. Let's bring the heat. Let's bring the friggin' heat, dude. Do, do, do. Oh, hit me. Hit me.
the Champions League at Benfica. Tottenham and the Portuguese Giants to battle in match day three of the Champions League. It's the Champions! And a beautiful atmosphere for a game. Hopefully we can, oh, they have Bentoncourt. We sold Bentoncourt to them in January. No kidding. Or in the summer. Ooh, good block. All right, guys, they are here to play. Mickey also already has a yellow. Go. Yeah, they, I, I forgot we'd sold Benton Court. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Guy absolutely cooked it. Ton of traffic. Vicario couldn't see it coming. Sizzled that ball into the back of the net. Oh, yes. Seca. Indrik. Pass back to Seca. I guess. Volley. First time. Volley it. Oh, goodness. Vicario, talk. Oh, good pocket of space here. Bellarmino Seca. Bellarmino Seca. Chigichi. Oh, it was offside on who? Didn't even say. Okay. Could have been Chigichi or Scott up. He's off. He's off. He's off. Flag's already up. It said Seca was offside. That doesn't make any sense. All right. Yep, he is off. Okay. Good line. Come on, boys. It's going short. Why do we have a guy on the keeper now? I don't like, no. We don't do that anymore. No, we don't do that anymore. No, no marking the keeper. Then if you score, it's offside. If they don't have anybody on the post, then it's offside if you score. So we don't want that. All right, George, do something crazy. You know, that was simple but good. Skoda. Oh. Do we still have uh, low crosses on? We need to fix that. All right, Rico. Coming back in. Rico. It's still Rico. Yeah, Basuma, that's a tough ask. Kind of glad that wasn't a highlight. I don't want to see my goalkeeper that far out of the goal about to do something stupid. But it's Googly Elmo, hero of the League Cup. Use the freaking fullbacks, dude. Their press does not include people taking away the fullbacks. They do have two guys up there that can take away the center backs if you just stand there and wait for an hour. Thank you. Right in front of you. There it is. Javi Guerra. Hendrick. On the gallop. On the gallop. Oh, and it's Guerra. Has to be a goal, and it is for Chikichi. George Chikichi. George the Hammer. Dude, he's, he just dropped the George. Skoda. Oh, Hendrick. Bellarmino. Inacio. Mickey Vandeven. Gonzalo Inacio. Oh, what a ball up for Guerra. God, I was hoping he'd like take that down. But... Yep. He dropped the George. Oh, he, he drew three defenders there. This is all wide open. How do we not like uh, Indrick was open for an hour. We could have slipped him in with two different players had the ball. Slip him in. Good response, obviously. 
their early goal, but let's let's take advantage of being on the front foot here. Oh, George. Oh, uh, that was a hell of a header. Play it short. Play it short. Yes. Why did he go right back? Oh, oh yes! Javi Guerra! Ooh. Oh, he's put a little something on that one, Javi Guerra. A little extra mustard. Oh, it a huge deflection. Never mind. I thought he just hit it so hard the keeper couldn't get to it. It took a ma just smacked it right off a dude. Wall pass into the goal. Oh, Inacio. Oh, Basuma. What was that? Okay, well, that didn't work out too well, did it? Good front footed defending there. Seca. Oh, there's a couple of through balls here, dude. How do you not? <sighs> Where's Kazu? He's still hurt. Pretty weird half. We didn't really get anything going after that goal. Okay, I'll focus on the possession because we are up a goal right now at Benfica, which a win in any of the road matches in the way the Champions League is set up right now is great. Obviously, at Benfica is certainly not our pot four match. So, getting the dub. Submit Yellen's leading against Real Madrid. Yeah, it's because they sold Endrick, honestly. If we're being so honest, like, if, if, if we are being so honest, it's because they sold Endrick. If I may be excruciatingly honest for a second. Hey, 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 that's mine. Thank you, Eves. What are we looking at, Eves? Survey your options. That shouldn't have even been on the list. I'm looking at Gonzalo Inacio, who I think might need a sub. Chigichi. Oh, George. Oh, don't do it to him, George. Oh. But I, I kind of did actually want you to do it to them, even though I was saying I didn't, in case that was confusing. I was kind of hoping you'd do it to him, actually. It was an option. I want to be clear. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's how you end up with a 6.3 when we have the lead. I want to see us build something. What are you doing? Whoa, man. That worked, but it scared me. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter if it actually works. If my heart rate goes up, it's probably not the best way to break the press. Thank you. And Osio's the guy that can actually pass back there. Get us to the next level here. George, nice. Ooh, they were open. Got to be bold there. They were opening up. All right, Indrik. What the hell, man? Really? We did all that work to get up there, dude. Rico, could you have done that any worse? Had to be him. Had to be him, didn't it?
Constantelius, you're in for Seca. He's been buns. Phillips, uh, no, Anasio should stay in. I'd love to get him out, but I can't. Uh, we need him for this type of match. So, Constantelius and Echo Romo's coming in at striker. Go! Oh, when we blocked that first shot, I was like, oh, sweet, we're going to get out of this. Like, when we got this first block, I was like, oh, nice. And then that happened. Vandevin's on a yellow. He's also tired. We'll get him. I'm also going to go with Rejevich for Javi Guerra. Though he's got the goal. It was deflected anyways. Oh, I hate that I'm about to do this, but I am totally about to do this. I, hate, I, I, want, I want it on the record. I hate that I am about to do this. I am also totally about to do it. <sighs> okay. Uh, you'd be a little safer with the... Actually, no. No, he's fine. And Osseo can do it. He's just not doing it well right now. All right, guys. Now we get really aggressive. Uh, Indrik is only cleared for 75. It's time to get him. I'll go Mikey. Mikey! Uh, guess what, dude? You're up. Uh, we are going to switch the sides. So, oh, no. Well, one of them has to be a winger. I'd rather George be the one cutting in. Okay. Come on, Mikey. Give me something. Give me something, Mikey. Oh, come on, dude. We're going really aggressive trying to get the three points at Benfica here. Come on. Alrighty. Rico, good spot, Regevich. God, his movement's great. More. Whoa, Basuma, and Echo Romo. Yeah, I do use two strikers in this FM. I just don't have two strikers. I literally only have one available right now. Well, that was definitely a card. Yanis, there's no arguing that. I guess uh, I'll make sure that we're a little more responsible defensively than my guys are being right now, so we'll do that. Come on, guys. Come on. Oh, Constantelius way to battle. George Shigichi. Shigichi. Constantelius. It's Eves. What a hit by Eves Basuma, huh? Not too bad, yeah, but that was a really winnable match. We controlled a lot of that match. Uh, their goals were kind of fluky. It just, um, yeah, we, we had most of that match control. It's That's why I feel like it's two points lost instead of one gained. We're like, Barcelona, I felt like it was one gained. This, I feel like we let two points slip. And that can be huge. I mean, we're trying to get into the top eight here. And so that's important. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the Prime, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream and spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Enjoy your bacon. Dang it. Uh, well, you just... What? 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 Explain this to me like I'm five. Clearly, I'm missing something. I don't understand how you were, uh, 
you are jaded. We just played two matches in a four-day stretch, and you're like, can't do it. Cannot do it. I've had enough. I am not, I'm going to rest him from training for a week and not play him in the next two matches, and then you'll be fine. Because if you're not fine, then you don't deserve to be a professional athlete. Goodness. Matthew, thank you for the year. Said your second goal was bad, too. Yeah, it was a big deflection. But we controlled the majority of the match, so we're much more likely to get those types of plays where they didn't get near our goal as much. And so it sucked. Uh, the second goal was... The second goal was fairer than the first because that was the best chance that Benfica had created all day. But the uh, the first goal sucked. It was just a corner scramble. Dude ended up with the ball, gave it a smack. Seeing eye shot that found its way through the crowd, but that happens. We're just going to need to pop up with uh, some wins against some other teams then if we want to get into that uh, top eight. Because it's not good enough just to draw matches if you want to get top eight. That's That'll get us into the knockouts. But we want to be straight through the round of 16. And those types of results will not get us straight through to the round of 16. The draw away to Barcelona, the win at home against Real Sociedad, both are results that can get us into that last, you know, in, into the top eight. But draw away to Benfica. That's almost like a sorting hat type match. If you can get three points away to Benfica, or like Porto, you're probably going to be good to get into the top eight. We missed it. Our next Champions League match is uh, Stad Rene at home. And then we have Ajax at home. I think those are two very winnable matches. So, oh, yes. Kazuma Konda is able to finally play. I'm sending him out on the field. I'm, I, I remember what I said. I'm going to send him out there for 45 minutes and try and make sure he doesn't get hurt. Sar got food poisoning. Look, I'm not saying I'm the one that did it, but maybe, but it's possible. No, thank you for the 15 months. Remember to adopt a spur. 1-800-ADOPT-A-SPUR. Pape Matosar. Pape Matosar is the guy, the guy you should be adopting. Oh, God. If we don't sell him in January, I'm going to lose it. I might just, in a huff, attempt to mutually terminate his contract, which he would obviously turn down because that would cost him actual just oodles of money. Just an actual massive pile of money that he would then be losing out on. That's what happens when you make $18 million a year. But he's not getting all those appearance and unused substitute fees because I'm not even sticking him out on the field for these types of matches. He's getting nothing. I want him to know it was me. Yeah, very true. God, I miss when Game of Thrones was good. That show had a stranglehold on my mind. Mutual termination costs you money? Yes. But less than paying out the entire rest of the contract. That's basically what the deal is. You agree to a buyout with the player. Which is why it is not the smart thing to do because there will be a team that comes along that wants to pay the majority of his wage and will pay us money for the privilege. But the more I sit there and just look at Pape Matarsar leeching money out of this club, the more I want to get him out any way necessary. Bayern Munich midfielder Rudiger Aschnitz. It sounds like a freaking World War I general. I love it. Piero Hincapi. That is an incredible Ecuadorian center back. He has developed as well as I've ever seen him develop. Killian Cedilia. Uh, that's also a very competent center back. Don't know why they're they're not more in love with him. There's the mandated single Saudi Arabian wonder kid. Do, 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 do. Carl Collier. No. Raul Salas. 
No. Sam Draycott. Oh, Manchester United, you've got a decent player. Bournemouth's Paul McIntosh. Vangelis Mikalidis. Yes, we should keep an eye on him. I literally loaned him in last year. Clearly, we don't hate him that much. Finn's Vic, goodness gracious. Ruslan Merkulov, that dude should have never gotten his move. I'll say it. You might like Shogun. No, I uh, we're planning on watching it. We're doing. We're gonna do like an apartment watch party and watch uh, Shogun at some point. But your hate is getting weird now. What was I hating on? I don't even remember hating on anything in the last. Oh, on Pape Matarsar. Sad thing is I really like Pape Martarsar in real life. But we need to poison him again! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Should be we should be able to fly. I'm I'm frustrated we didn't win that match because then we would be top eight. Yo, Savi, thank you for three freaking years, bro. Rob Angelini. Thank you for the 100 bits. I don't have much to say. I just want the Golden Kappa emoji. Go Browns. Uh, the Browns will win a Super Bowl in the next 100 years. I'm fairly confident in that prediction, so you can take that, take that one to the bank. Fairly confident. Oh, yeah, isn't Chelsea playing Brighton, like, right now? Uh, 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 yep. Yeah. No, Newcastle. It's actually a massive six-pointer for the teams that want to believe they can finish in the top eight and get Europe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Chelsea probably needs. Astrid Wett probably fired up uh, Nicholas Jackson before the game. You know, now he's ready to go. Good for him, dude. <laughs> nice. Newcastle's challenge not to absolutely suck in London is not going well. Wait, is Newcastle just always bad in London? That's kind of crazy. But that is it for today. Good new week. And uh, we are, we're off and running. We, we've gotten through our, our 24 days with one match stretch here. And honestly, dude, the prim, we're getting fantastic results. But love you guys. Thank you for hanging out today. Thank you for every uh, every single one of the subs, the gifted subs. They always mean the world uh, and allow us to do all of the different things that we do. So I really do appreciate it. Um, and I will be back tomorrow. As I continue to get ahead on stuff, the plans are to be able to do more streams as well once we are kind of uh, ahead. On, you know, uh, now we're getting in a rhythm with like Zealandism and everything. Uh, the plan is to, to then get ahead. So we will be able to stream more. So that's something to keep your eyes peeled for. That's where the Crusader Kings, the Kinshi, that's where all that stuff can make a, uh, make a serious comeback. Very excited to be able to stream some of that stuff as well. Because I've got to play my prerequisite amount of FM. Because I don't play FM outside of this save, like, on a personal level. And so we've got to scratch the itch. So who am I kidding? I just end up playing FM all the time anyways. But I'd love to be able to, like, have, have time maybe in the evening to stream. All right, this dude. Oh, he has followers only on. My war against that continues. Or find somebody we haven't rated before if you guys have the copy boss to go in. Yeah, an evening stream. No, I've 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 longed to do evening streams. I I just I get you know, I do so much my we we do a lot of different things, right? From Zealandism to the main channel. I mean that is all stuff that we do outside of that I do outside of the stream the streams themselves so i often have lots of things to do in the evening i right, found it you guys ready cannonball oh yeah 
Simba. Thank you for the four months. Thank you to every single person that subbed, everybody that was here today. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, and we will be, remember, the time has changed. So we had the time change in the U.S., which means it'll be an hour earlier uh, than you're probably used to. But I'll see you guys then. Have a great one. Bye. All right, where do the day is? Let's look. Refurbish. Refurbish. R-E-F-U-R-B-I-S-H. I actually know what this means. To refurbish something is to brighten or freshen it up or to repair and make improvements to it. They are refurbishing the old house with hopes of selling it for a profit. The store refurbishes and sells computers that can often meet the needs of those who don't need the latest technology. Fair enough. <laughs> See you at the end of another stream for another word of the day.